Welcome, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to MineCon Live 2019. I'm very excited you could join us. I'm Jessica Chobot, your pre- and post-show host, and we are hanging out backstage at MineCon Live. Now, this annual update on all things Minecraft is an absolute highlight for me, and I can promise you we are all in for an exciting event. I'm super stoked to be here. As you can hear, everybody else is super stoked to be here. I listen to Minecraft daily, the soundtrack. I have my own builds that I work on and I create a ton of stuff with my son who then promptly makes me destroy it, uh, some of which you can see here. I'm very proud of this. This is my Wonder Woman Invisible Jet from the JLA comics and the uh, cartoon, so I'm super, super stoked about that. I actually put her inside. But enough about me. The audience is arriving in the main theater as we speak, and the atmosphere is absolutely electric. Hopefully at some point we can go and have a look. But in the meantime, we've got a fabulous program ahead of us. So let me start by giving you a quick overview on how this day will unfold. So this bit now with me is the pre-show. And then in 30 minutes time, we will start the main show. We'll then return here to the backstage studio and I'll be joined by some of the development team from Mojang who will be here to answer your questions. So make sure to stick around for the post show. We have lots to look forward to. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our panelists. Now these guys have recorded their presentations which we will make available to you after the main broadcast. So please welcome King Bee Dogs, Q Magnet, Il Mango, Skywalker, and Iscal85. Welcome to my Minecon Live 2019, you guys. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks Thank for joining you. me here. All right, so can you guys give everyone a quick overview about what your panel is about? KB Dogs, let's start with you. Yeah, so I'm sure there are many players out there who've had some really great ideas we'd like to add to the game. And Minecraft is this incredible platform for creativity. Uh, through the power of modding, no matter who you are, anyone can add their ideal experience to Minecraft. Mm -hmm. But every experience starts with design, right? So it's kind of like the seed this, that grows. Mm -hmm. um, Basically, you think of an item that kind of helps you defeat that long-standing boss, or perhaps a potion that helps you last that little bit longer in your battles. Design helps us structure the experiences we play in Minecraft. But every experience starts with ideas, mm -hmm. and you've got to kind of think of, like, how do I bring it all together? Through our panel, we hope to inspire players on not only how to structure these experiences through design, but also how to evolve it once you've actually released it into the wild. Got it. So would you say that your panel is a way of taking those ideas and learning how to utilize them in the game? Yeah, absolutely. So we want to kind of go through the process of how you actually design these experiences mm -hmm. and then implement them into the game, basically. Very cool. All right, so moving on, a cube magnet, pitch me on your panel. <laughs> So our panel is about something called Diversity 3. It's the third game in a series that I've been working on for a number of years, and it's all built inside Minecraft. Mm -hmm. So um, it's got, basically what Diversity is, is uh, it's like 10 games inside one game that's all built inside Minecraft. It's like total gameception. So we've got um, a, a mystery space adventure. Mm -hmm. We've got a mob arena where you fight mobs. We've got a puzzle section where you can use your brain and study your brawn if you want. We've even got a trivia section where if you get an answer wrong, you have to do a funny little mini game to get mm -hmm. out of the uh, punishment. So we had a lot of fun doing that. And the panel's sort of like uh, our experience of building that. We start on a world that has nothing in it, just mm -hmm. air. And we build this thing. And so there's different techniques that our team used to build it. And it's totally free. So you can download this game, this Diversity 3. Mm -hmm. You can install it on your own computer. You can play it solo or you can upload a server and play with friends. It's really, really fun with friends. Oh, very cool. So kind of like a lot of... Um I would, I guess, for lack of a better phrase, mini games, but all in one common main area. Yeah, yeah, it's it's really fun because you get a lot of choice to do. You, you might not like this one thing, but maybe you like mm -hmm. this other thing, and just kind of caters to a lot of aspects of Minecraft gameplay. Very awesome. All right, so Il Mango, let's go with you. Pitch me on your panel. So I'm part of the Cycraft server, and what we're trying to do is to push the vanilla survival game to the limits. Mm -hmm. So the server is all about uh, redstone and building uh, farms, for example, mm -hmm. and and we work together on that as a team. Uh, the title of our panel is How Automation Can Enrich Your Game Experience. And there's basically two main points. The first one is with automation, you can get around a lot of the, the grindy, repetitive work, for mm -hmm. example, for resource gathering. And the second one is actually yeah, it's just a lot of fun. It's what the sandbox game is about, creating something larger out of the basic components we were given. And our panel will also show and talk about some of the highlight projects of our server that we did in the last five years. Mm -hmm. Examples include um, an enderpearl cannon that can shoot you over thousands of blocks in seconds. We got a mining machine and a flying machine that can remove bedrock. So 
All right, would you say you focus mostly on Max, if not exclusively? Yeah, mostly. We also try to decorate the area around it, but we're not really experts on that. So we're mostly trying to make good forms. What's the most difficult mech that you've ever built? I would say the mining machine. We call it a quarry. Mm -hmm. it about 80 hours to design that. Oh, yeah. That's a lot. Okay, yeah. very well done. Did you, did you want to elaborate? It looked like I cut you off. Did you? Oh, yeah. Uh, so it's yeah, really complex. Everything has to be right. Uh -huh. Giant machine. And yeah, this was the most complex thing I ever made. Very cool. All right, uh, Skywalker, <laughs> tell me about your panel. All right, so our panel is pretty much made up of all of the, I kind of call them the uh, Marketplace All-Stars. So uh, all of our panel is made up of Minecraft Marketplace partners. Mm -hmm. And so we create content for uh, the Bedrock Edition of Minecraft. So that's Switch, Xbox, uh, Windows 10 Edition, iPhone, Android, all of that. And so um, our panel pretty much breaks down almost like kind of like the crafting recipes that go into making a piece of content. Mm -hmm. so so we break it down through entities, mechanics, textures, and then end up with builds. And we kind of show you how we create stuff and also some of the secrets that go like kind of behind the scenes, like work around stuff that we do mm -hmm. and show people to kind of inspire them and show them how they can approach creating like workarounds and tricks. So kind of teaching everybody on how to be a, a creator. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And yeah, and we even have some good uh, tips for people who are aspiring to become creators. We're all fortunate that Minecraft has created this incredible opportunity for us where we can, this is our full-time job, this is our careers creating games in Minecraft. And so it's pretty awesome when I can go and talk to kids and they're like, so what do you do for a living? I'm like, I play Minecraft for a living. They're like, that's amazing. And, and so... Do all the kids think you're like the coolest person in the room? Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty <laughs> awesome. Like, I'm, I'll go in somewhere with my wife and she'll be like, hey, what does your husband do? And she's like, well kids, if you ask him, why don't you go ask him? They come up to me, they're like, what do you do for a living? Like, I make Minecraft games. Like, it's so awesome. And then I show them stuff and they love it. So. That's awesome. You're their hero. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, last but not least, Iskal85. Tell me about your panel. So we're here with the Hermitcraft group, which is a multiplayer SMP server. And we, we've been playing together, I think, trying to get this right, for seven and a half years now. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's, it's, it's quite, quite ridiculous. But we are here to talk about our multiplayer experience because Personally, I mean, I love Minecraft. I've been playing ever since it came out and probably, you know, play too much Minecraft to start a po if that is a possibility. But to play together with your friends, to create things together with your friends and, and like, take the game beyond what it maybe was meant to be from the beginning, mm -hmm. um, that, that's just something else. And we're here to discuss, like, the things that we have done in the past and, and uh, specifically this season where we've played on the same world for one and a half years now. So we had a lot of things to talk about, mm -hmm. but, it, yeah, it... We, multiplayer Minecraft is, is definitely, yeah, if, 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 if people get the opportunity to play multiplayer Minecraft, they need to take it. Play with your friends. Basically. So I was going to say, do you think you focus more on, uh, do you enjoy Minecraft because you enjoy Minecraft or because it's one more opportunity to hang out with your friends? That's a great point. I think it's both. I think yeah. it's both. Like, it, it's such a social thing and I mm -hmm. hope that people understand this, you know, we play Minecraft, but... I, we're also hanging out with our friends like that. Yeah. It's a very social thing. Well, and that seems to be the common denominator talking to everybody here is that it's really about the community and friendship and then all the additional stuff about Minecraft is just icing on the cake. Yes, Would you say? absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Very cool. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. As a final reminder, all of these amazing panels will be available on Minecraft.net over the weekend, so make sure you go and have a look. All right, so next I want to look back at last year's Biome vote and just quickly review what you voted for and have a sneaky peek at what you're going to be voting on this year. So let's take a look. Whoa, that tumbleweed almost hit me. Well, they don't call it the Badlands because of their good manners. Ooh, this new cactus is fancy. Ouch! What's that spooky vulture doing? Vultures are drawn to loot left behind by unlucky explorers. Not the loot! Is that a, a boat? Yes, this boat has a chest built in for all the cool things you find at sea. And look, it's our new friend, the frog. Ew! Actually, we're not that close. Here's a mangrove, a tree that thrives in the swamp. We should get out of here. That frog is looking at me funny. Uh, uh, uh. 
Oh, mountains, snow. Watch your step. The snow is snowier than before. A goat. He reminds me of you a little bit. Mountains are getting an upgrade. Jagged cliffs, snow-capped peaks, dramatic views. The goat is getting away. Let's go. All right, well, there's nothing difficult about that choice now, is there? I have absolutely no idea which one I'd go for. Such a difficult decision. Totally would go for mountains. When the voting happens, please be prepared, as you will need to have a Twitter account so that you can go to the Minecraft Twitter page, where there will be a pinned poll at the top. So may the best biome win! Now I'd like to welcome my next guests, Ben Kelly and Deirdre Kornstrom. Welcome, you guys. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for joining me. So, Ben, your work epitomizes what Minecraft is doing in education. You are a massive champion of teaching empathy, and you've been a Minecraft player and teacher since the very beginning. You recently accepted a STEM award for running a global sustainability shuffle project where classrooms around the world built SDG solutions in Minecraft. So can you tell us a little bit of what that means? Sure thing. Uh, for the last two years, students mm -hmm. around the world, from kindergarten all the way to college, mm -hmm. have been working in Minecraft to build solutions for the UN sustainability development goals. Um, there's a single world file with 17 villages and each village represents a place for a goal and they have been building and handing off to the next country and then the next country so it's it's been going very well and the teachers and students involved are, are awesome. They're awesome. Great. Well so then what are some examples of what the UN uh, has as its goals? One that comes to mind right away that's super relevant today is Ireland did a, a build for the goal 15 which is life on land mm -hmm. and they did a bee sustainability goal um, so they, they actually were thinking about bees two years ago. Um, they did a really cool side project, though, about cows and cow farts. And yes, I said cow farts. Um, and that was, uh, if you feed cows seaweed mixed with their food, cow fart emissions or methane emissions go down. So there's some real serious learning here with kids in elementary school uh, that's happening in this project. Is that true about yeah, feeding cows seaweed and apparently if you if you feed them seaweed methane emissions yeah. drop by almost 99 percent no wait well look at that you learn something <laughs> new at minecon every yeah. year i feel so much smarter now that i know about you know sustainable cow farts yeah, that's right <laughs> thank you well what has the response been from teachers and students involved in the program there are incredible teachers using minecraft all over the world and the teachers involved in this sustainable sustainability shuffle are no mm -hmm. different um, they not only taught the kids about the un goals but they mm -hmm. also inspired uh, great solutions. Again, solutions from all over the world for these goals and uh, maybe one day the United Nations will get a chance to see these goals. Yeah, that's great. Well, it's been super cool hearing about students in countries all over the world tackle the SDGs in Minecraft, especially using your lesson plan. Yeah. And a w what an amazing way to get Minecraft in the classroom. Congrats. It should be fun once it's released uh, very soon. Yeah, great. Uh, Deirdre leads the Minecraft education team and is a director of the Block by Block Foundation, which is a partnership between Mojang and UN Habitat. So, Deirdre, can you tell us about some of the things that you have done in Minecraft education this year? Yeah, it's been a really exciting year. I think Ben's project is a great example of connecting classrooms around the world around the theme of sustainability. And I think in the last year, the thing that's been really exciting is how educators are taking Minecraft Education Edition and really making it their own. My team visited a school in New Zealand where they were testing out a world that explored New Zealand's Maori language and culture uh, in Minecraft. And so that's been amazing to see how enthusiastic and curious the students are with that. Um, in the last year, we also introduced in-game coding in Minecraft, so uh -huh. students can um, mine and farm and create and explore using code, um, which has been a big unlock for teaching coding in both elementary um, and middle and even in high school. Um, with the Minecraft Hour of Code, we've had over 100 million Hour of Code sessions, and, and pretty soon we're going to have a new Hour of Code tutorial to announce, which That's will be exciting. That's awesome. Is that what we're seeing in the video right yes, now? Yes, yeah. And then this was a um, back-to-school update. Um, we put Minecraft lessons into the the Minecraft Education Edition lesson library, so the students can access it right in the game. Um, we also added some features to make the game more accessible for players, including the immersive reader, um, where students, maybe early learner, learners or people who have language um, acquisition differences, can use immersive reader to change character spacing, change line spacing, mm -hmm. um, have it read any in-game text to them, and also translate it into different languages. I love that. I love that the immersive reader not only can like runs the gamut of the uh, reader skill level, but also potentially could teach somebody a new language or Absolutely. Any myriad of possibilities there. So how did the sustainability shuffle, or uh, yeah, yeah, sustainability shuffle, Susie Sells, Sea Shells, 
uh, go this year. <laughs> it was great. I, you know, I think it's um, sometimes surprising how Minecraft can be used in classroom settings and educational mm -hmm. settings. And this is such a great example of something we didn't sort of plan or think was possible, but having students all over the world thinking about sustainability and climate change um, in the Minecraft world is amazing. Awesome. Well, this actually uh, goes out to either of you or both of you, whoever wants to tackle it first. Any advice on how teachers can engage the Minecraft community and then educate themselves using Minecraft as a teaching tool? Yeah, so we have a lot of resources available for educators. I think one of the great ways that Minecraft can come into the classroom is having their students bring it into them. So we have lots of um, lesson examples. So if you're watching and you're excited to try this, go and find a Minecraft lesson or come up with an idea of something that you're learning in class and, and ask your teacher about it. Awesome. Yeah, ben? peer pressure can be used uh, uh, for good reasons. And if you're a student watching this, the best way to get Minecraft into your classroom is to peer pressure pressure your teacher and principal <laughs> until they give in. That's how I was pressured into it, and it's been a great ride since. Just corner them in the hallway. That's right. <laughs> force them to bring Minecraft in the classroom. I love it. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Uh, you can find out more information about Minecraft education at education.minecraft.net. So celebrating Minecraft's 10 years, Mojang has teamed up with the Museum of Pop Culture, MoPop, to create the first ever interactive Minecraft exhibit. Get hands-on at Minecraft the Exhibition, featuring life-size Minecraft creatures, scenics, and interactive experiences. It opens October 19th, and tickets are on sale right now. And let's now just take a moment to reflect a bit more on all of the things that have happened in the world of Minecraft over the last year. Have a look at this. Where am I? What year is it? Oh, hello! Villagers. New villagers. But more on them soon. For now, the new villages. I'm loving this. Ooh, ooh. I saw a boss right there, it looked like. Ooh, I cannot wait. I want to see the actual fighting mechanics. Into a mini Minecraft world, and it actually works really well, especially with like the views outside. It looks amazing. And in oh, the <laughs> <laughs> parrot jumping away. Oh, 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 the sponge works. Ooh, that's <laughs> very weird. There's a cartographer, our farmer, our armorer. With foxes, guys, we've been waiting all week. Super excited. Get in the world. Ah, just, 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 get it. Oh, get it. It's not good at all. Oh my gosh! Attack! Shoot the arrows! Go! Holy moly! There are arrows flying everywhere. That encompasses a large majority of Minecraft's last ten years worth of accomplishments, but it's also a highly connected adventure map. Yeah, now you're looking like a real sheriff. I'm kind of curious if 4J build the maps with like default texture. That's so cute. How are your claws now? They're nice and sharp? Yeah. Why are you sharpening your claws, by the way? Oh, dude. So cool. Woo, that is cool. Okay. I like this too. So, oh, yes, you can play multiplayer and go up. Okay. And then you can start constructing things that other players are then able to see. So I can see through the build. Uh, I guess you're gonna stay right there. And uh, you. Uh, I guess, can we also put you there? Who is he? Come here, friend. Let me, let me be your friend. You are a mason. Oh, Jesus, there's a lot in here. Oh, really? Yeah. Should we just get out? I think kill them and then... I also need to breed another cat. I don't think I need oh, if I breed this cat yeah <laughs> this is amazing dude so basically we can play minecraft anywhere we want now goodbye hard work goodbye funny guys let's just light everything on fire goodbye goodbye bills you will be I love that one. That sounds like how I usually play. Oh, let me build all this and then blow it up with tons of TNT blocks. 
What an amazing year it has been. So many fabulous things to look back on and celebrate and to tell us more about some of their main highlights. I'd now like to welcome Megan and Liam. Welcome to both of you. Hey. Thank you for joining me here. Thank you for, uh, thank you for having us. Oh, of course. Now, I know you guys are going to be part of the show. Do you know anything about it that you can tell us? Oh, you're just going to have to wait and see, but we have Fine. some good surprises yep. in store. Oh, good. It's well, good. I can handle with that. I can sit with that. That's great. Um, it's been, a, that being said, it's been an incredible year. Uh, Megan, what has been your favorite highlight over the past year? My favorite highlight? Uh, well, I like building, so the scaffolding has been incredible, right? Oh, yeah. I love the scaffolding. It's so fun and the popcorn effect. I don't know. It's like ASMR. <laughs> I got that. Every time you, like, yeah, cut it down. Cut it like, down and uh, all just slowly falls down. It's like, oh. Except when I do it underneath me and then I, like, fall to my death. That's the worst. Mm -hmm. Oh. I do that often. It's <laughs> just when do I learn? I don't think it happens. <laughs> <laughs> Liam, what about you? What's been your favorite thing this last year? The updates have been really, really good. Uh, villagers and pillagers, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. But I've still enjoyed my roots of caving. I like the adventure aspect of it too. Exploring new areas. There's new chests and villages too. Bunch of new loot. I just like the feel of adventuring. Mm -hmm. um, how do you guys like to play Minecraft? Do you, creative, survival, friends? Um, your survival, method? Uh, SMPs. Friends. Or, <laughs> you have one, your mom. But, uh, I thought he was your friend. Not after this. Oh, got it. Okay, <laughs> this is awkward now. I've made it awkward. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We like playing on uh, SMPs together, like uh -huh. servers together, which is usually survival because there's a bit more grind and accountability involved. But uh, I don't mind going into creative to build things mm -hmm. uh, for time lapses. I think mm -hmm. it's really satisfying. Uh, but yeah, I love it, creative time lapses. Good. I can watch those videos. Videos all they're so day nice on long. TikTok, right? Mm -hmm. I like making those too. They're fun. Yeah, they're good. How about you, Liam? Uh, I enjoy the grinding aspect of it. I love survival. I hate creative. I'm going to be the one uh, against you two on this. Get off the stage. No, I'm kidding. I don't stay. Want to. No, you just got to stay. Okay, uh, it's your job. Um, but So you hate creative as much as that hurts me. Uh, I don't hate creative. I just don't like using it myself. Oh, that's fine. It takes away from yeah. it a little no, bit No, I'm only me. teasing. Um, I don't like when you tease me. I'm, okay. That's oh, man. awkward again. <laughs> so <laughs> what is your preferred H? method? Just gr grinding across the board and yeah. just seeing how far you can go? Yeah. I like trying to go for the big things like the beacon, slowly grow up to that. Mm -hmm. I hate things. Like me and Megan have had this argument a lot of times, the AFK fish farm. Oh, I love AFK fish farm. I hate them. Why? It's just you do nothing and you get so many good things. I don't, I want to earn just it. Just set it and forget it. I can be eating popcorn, <laughs> yeah. watching That's a movie. Great. I'm like, yeah, I'm getting that sweet, sweet loot. Megan goes to sleep. It's like, I'm going to have a mending book in the morning. Yeah, well, I'm not 12. Mm. What are you talking about? Mm. That's fantastic. Uh, which biome, since we're going to shift gears here a little bit, uh, are you rooting, rooting for in the biome vote? A uh, swamp. Yeah. I am recently, I have fallen into uh, the place of Swamp Queen in Kingdom Craft. <laughs> so even though I haven't posted my first episode, I have uh, a lot of pride in the swamp. Nice. Mm. Which biome are you looking for? Mountains. I want the billy goats. Yeah, me too. Well, I just, yeah, I've got a build currently that could use an upgrade with the mountains, and that would be fantastic. And the billy goats. And the billy goats. Of course. And the billy goats as well. Uh, in your opinion, what do you think has helped Minecraft stay relevant over the course of 10 years? And not only relevant, but also kind of kicked it up a notch, because this year it got really popular again. Yeah, the thing is, Minecraft is just a good game from mm -hmm. the start to finish, and mm -hmm. the updates over the years have only made it better. I think a lot of people have taken a bit of a break, mm -hmm. um, and they have something so amazing to come back to. We have people yep. like PewDiePie who's playing, Jacksepticeye, and then uh, Cupquake has made her return to Minecraft after like big. years of not playing, and there's so much content. There's mm -hmm. there you can seriously play it forever and not get bored. Yeah, it's definitely the updates. It's yeah. there's so many new things every year you look forward to. The snapshots giving you new uh, playability whenever you need it. Not necessarily uh, the game isn't perfect yet, but you could go on there, see what's new, test it out, and then go back to your normal world. I also yeah. think nostalgia was a big thing too. Yeah, nostalgia. I'm glad you mentioned that because I was I was gonna say as wonderful as the updates are, mm -hmm. I do think that the. The baseline being what it is, and it hasn't really changed too terribly much. You're yeah. able to kind of put it down when you need to, and come back to it, and still f pick up and go. Like it's not there's not that relearning curve. I mean, maybe a little bit, but only for a hot second in order to remember what your button layout is, and then and then you're just right back in the mix. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And also them adding like uh, uh, to the new consoles and that kind of stuff, making it for, uh, different mm -hmm. in every cross single platform. console cross platform. Yeah, has really updated it too and made it more accessible. 
Yeah, I, I heartily agree. Uh, well, shifting over to the new stuff that's coming up, what are your thoughts on Minecraft Earth? Um, oh, you've I've actually been play playing it. Yeah, yeah I played it that. at E3 and then recently at the offices. And mm. it's just, I'm a big Pokemon Go fan. I love mm. when uh, worlds collide and AR is just so fantastic. I love mm. going outside and being able to be uh, surrounded by Minecraft, going mining, maybe doing some raiding with some friends. It's, mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. just so much fun stuff. I don't want to tell you too much because I think a little bit of it should be like a surprise. Oh, totally. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, really quick, I got 30 seconds. Give me an answer. Minecraft uh, Earth. I'm Dungeons. excited for it. Haven't tried it. Dungeons, I'm very, very excited for it. Dungeons is the game that I'm looking forward to the most. I want it to be so good. It looks beautiful. I want it. It is good. Fantastic. Yep. Well, judging by the noise that we were he hearing earlier, things are really starting to warm up behind me. Shall we go and take a peek at the main stage? Yeah, what's up, guys? All right. There they are. Minecraft, <laughs> Minecon Live 2019 <laughs> studio audience. Hi, guys. <laughs> yeah, lots of energy in there. Everyone looks super psyched up for the show. Now, bringing it back to you guys, what do you personally hope that they are going to tell us about this year? Not asking you to give away secrets, just your, what you, what you want to see. Oh, man. Mm. Hot seat. I mean, you know, I want that, that swamp update, mm. but, you know, you already know why. I want more info about Minecraft Earth and Minecraft Dungeons, but I want a big change to caving. That's the big thing for me. What would be your ideal change that Ooh. you would re you could potentially receive or that you're hoping to get? More hostile mobs. Really? I want them to hurt me Man, so bad. you like the punishment. I do. Dang. Well, <laughs> geez. <laughs> Well, that's just about all the time that we've got. A massive thanks to all my guests today. I've had a blast as usual. Now we are ready to go to the main broadcast. Enjoy MineCon Live 2019, everybody. I look forward to seeing you back here after the show, so make sure that you don't go away because we will have much more for you as soon as the main episode wraps up. See you guys in a bit. All right, so now that we've got some downtime, what are you really hoping to see in the uh, cave update? Hostile mobs. That's 100%. it? Just hostile mobs? Well, more than that, but I mainly want it to be the hostile mobs. Like, <laughs> I want it to be more dangerous. I want to not just be able to get the diamond armor early on and then just survive. Mm -hmm. I want there to be something that this is kind of a hope that they steal armor and you have to like chase them down and have to take oh, it back from them. That'd be kind of cool. Right? Stealing items. Yeah. yeah. Oh, d that, how, huh. I mean, okay. Yeah. I could, that'd be kind of a cool ad. I just, that sounds so difficult already. I know. I know. <laughs> it's like, what about, um, what about like, I guess different types of, um, I mean, I know we have the Swamp Biome update, but what other kind of uh, updates would you want to have happen in, a, in any random biome? Oh. Mm -hmm. oh, in any random biome. We've talked about this. We want more flying creatures, more flying kind creatures. of. More flying creatures, yeah. It's, it's more about the world we were talking, in general. When we were doing the rehearsals, you mentioned dragons. Yeah, so you want to see, <laughs> I mean, I, which I'm not against, well, but I you want to see more. fly on something. Yeah. Like, if the vultures, you know, like, that would be cool to fly on them, right? Tame yeah. them somehow. Yeah. Mm. But also uh, to around. be attacked by something from the sky, because sometimes you're a little too safe, yeah. and it'd be kind of yeah. uh, scary. Phantoms pose a great threat at night, but to have something during the daytime that would really force you to take cover or mm -hmm. get better at PvP, which <laughs> I could <laughs> use that, um, would be awesome. So what's one of the coolest things that you guys ha would say that you've ever encountered in the game? And it can be anything. It could be something that you built. Ooh. It could be a, a, a particular mob moment that you had. Like, what was oh, something that really stuck out? the first time the turtle egg hatched? That oh. was just, like, such a great moment. Did you have your moment of, like, uh, making the turtle Weren't shell, you with too? me? We were together. Yeah, we were together. <laughs> Wait, that's so weird. <laughs> yeah, no, I block you out of my memory. I'm sorry. That's uh, okay. It's <laughs> same. So what would you say over the course of the last 10 years is your favorite thing? I mean, what really stuck out to you that, I mean, because that's a very long time. Some of the people even watching the show might not have been, been even born yet. Uh, so what would be the one thing that popped out to you the most that, oh, wow, this is a really iconic moment for this title? 
I think oh. it's being able to play with friends. I don't, I don't know if it's an iconic moment could fit that, but it's the friendships that you make just from playing Minecraft together mm -hmm. is, has been one of my favorite things. There's people I've met from all over the world that I never would have maybe had a conversation with, but because we're on the same Minecraft server, now we're friends. Mm -hmm. So building those friendships and staying in touch with people who have moved away has been like the most amazing part of Minecraft for me personally. For sure. Liam, really quick, because I'm getting in my IFB that they are ready for the show. What gotcha. would you say is your... Other than that, I would say uh, Redstone. Redstone has added a whole new thing to me. The first day I was able to use pistons was like game changing for me. It was awesome. It was like I got to make this door that I just press a button and I could walk through and it just opens up. It was beautiful. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I know, right? All right, very good. <laughs> uh, folks, thanks for joining us in our top secret talk. And get ready for MineCon 2019. Lydia Winters. Hello and welcome to MindCon Live 2019. I'm your host, Lydia Winters, and today we have a great show for you. It's been a really exciting year. In May, we celebrated 10 years of Minecraft. That means the game is older than some of you watching right now. This game has changed the lives of so many people watching, and I can definitely say that it has completely changed mine. Today, we'll look back at where we've been, where we are now, and we'll look into the future of all things Minecraft. It's our biggest show yet. There's something for everyone. Helping me out this year, we have four amazing co-hosts who are backstage getting ready right now. See you all soon. Each of them has a great game show in store for you. We have our yearly vote where you get to decide what gets added to the game next. We have three great choices this year, but I'll let our trusty news correspondent tell you more about that later. This past year, we announced not one, but two new Minecraft games, Minecraft Dungeons and Minecraft Earth. And today, on stage, you're gonna see live gameplay. It's going to be amazing. Between our two new games, our 10-year anniversary, and all of our new updates, 2019 has been a huge year for Minecraft. We actually have too much news to wait until the end of the show. So this year, we're gonna start right now with the first of four Minecraft update segments. Let's get started with something people have been buzzing about. <laughs> Please welcome Agnes and Corey from the Minecraft team. Hello, Agnes and Corey. What do the two of you do on the team? Hello. So I'm the lead of the Minecraft gameplay team. And I'm on the Minecraft gameplay team. Very convenient. <laughs> Thank you. So you're here to tell us about something pretty exciting and pretty adorable. What is it? Yes, so we're going to talk about the very cute and also useful bees. Bees, let's look at some bees. Yeah, so you can see here, the bees are going to and from the flowers, uh, kind of pollinating the flower, gathering some pollen, nectar, taking it back to the hive. Uh, as they go, you can see them sort of 
dropping the, the nectar pollen particles and growing the crops, actually. And so you can sort of uh, learn the relationship between the bee and the flowers and the crops and the hives that way. Yeah, that's awesome. They're a little bigger than I would have thought. How did you decide on their size? Yeah, so originally we thought maybe we'll have you know, tiny bees. Everyone expects bees to be tiny. They're already tiny. Uh, tiny bees are not cute enough. They, they, they make you feel like they're kind of annoying. They're kind of swarming in your ear. And then big bees, we tried bees the size of a full block. That That's was way, way too big. It was not, no, no, no. Uh, so we settled on about half a block, and we think it's the cutest size for a bee. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> People like the size of the bees. Apparently so. Yeah. And you actually thought a lot about how the real world and the game mechanics go together. So let's look at some of the ways you're teaching people about bees. Okay. Yes. So you can see here the campfire is being placed underneath the nests uh, in order to gather the honey and honeycomb Ooh. safely. Uh, one issue actually is that if you... <laughs> As you can see here, if you harvest without putting the campfire underneath, the bees get angry at you because they're, why are you invading their home? That's not cool. Uh, the campfire is smoking and allowing the bees to calm down. I think it really nicely to the Italians, when they stung you, they actually lose their stinger and eventually die, which of course is very sad, but it's th that's also how it works in real life, actually. So. Okay, and you're really excited because people can learn more about bees through Minecraft, and that's something pr pretty important to the two of you. Yes. So. Uh, often, actually, when we add things to Minecraft, we are thinking, can we teach something? And in this case, since the bee population is decreasing a lot in the real world, which is a big problem, we really felt that we wanted to, to like, teach the players. So that's why the, uh, one of the reasons to the, that the bees need flowers in order to produce honey and to uh, make, speed up the crop growth. Because if you actually plant uh, more flowers in the real world, that will help the bees in the real world as well. And Corey, you took this like learning about bees to the next level. Tell us about that. I did. I actually uh, I spent a long time going out and researching. I met with several bee experts. I went and studied <laughs> hives. I studied nests. Uh, I lived as a bee for a while, actually. <laughs> I, I feel like we need to see some footage of that to Be believe it. Yeah, I think we have that, actually. Believe it, right? <gasps> Dude, oh, we're going to meet the bees. I didn't know. This is B. Urban. Big eyes. Okay, Corey, it's a wrap for today. All right, Leif, it was good to be here. <laughs> so how much did you learn about the bees on your little expedition? I learned way more than anybody should ever know about bees. <laughs> Except maybe the bee experts? Except maybe the bee experts. But there are so many fascinating bee facts out there that I learned. And I mean, both Leif and Josefina, the people I met, were incredibly amazing, wonderful people, taught me everything. And so I actually used a lot of that knowledge to work on bees in Minecraft. That's really cool. And that's going to become a YouTube video that's a bit of a documentary about the process of bees. So you'll be able to watch that in a few weeks. I think next week. Next week. Oh, yeah. oh perfect. Cool. Yeah. But there's one thing no one has seen in any snapshots related to the bees. And we're going to premiere it here at Minecon. So what is it? Yes. So we're actually adding a new block, and that's the honey block. Let's see the honey block. Mm -hmm. So it's very sticky. And as you can see, you can't really jump when you are on the honey block. And it's also sticky on the sides, so you fall down very slowly. Also, you can't really run on it. It keeps you going pretty slowly, so you can't go very fast. You can't really outrun anything. <laughs> we also added some interesting piston mechanics to it. So uh, the honey block moves with piston, and also players or animals on it will also move together with the honey blocks. So how do you see players using this amazing new honey block? Yeah, I think it would be super cool if you know, players use these moving honey blocks to create some kind of like platform game map and the players have to jump and they move around and I think that could be really fun. Yeah, and I'm really looking forward to parkour maps. I really want to okay. see players utilize the sliding mechanics up and down, but also the uh, inability once you jump up, uh, jump down, you can't jump back up. So normally if there's a one block difference, you can just go back and forth, but with the honey block, you'd be stuck. That's amazing.
And last thing, Agnes, I know Corey has taken up a big hobby. It sounded like hobby. it. <laughs> okay. That you started doing yes. it too. But Corey, what 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 is Corey's hobby? Yeah, I, I haven't officially started doing it. It just happened. But so, for months, every day there is like at least at least ten, probably more like hundred bee puns every day at the office. Uh huh. <laughs> okay, Corey. Then to close out the bee section at MindCon Live 2019, can you give us a bee pun? I mean, that's pretty situational, though. I can't just wing it and be creative like that. <laughs> there we have it. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of players will be beelining to see that updated <laughs> flight. Thank oh you so God. much, Agnes and Corey. Thank you. <laughs> As I said earlier, this year we have four incredible co-hosts. They took their MineCon live training to a whole new level. work with us to create an incredible game show. For the first time ever, we're going to have a Minecraft triathlon. Shelby, what is a Minecraft triathlon? Basically, it's a relay with all the games. Minecraft, Minecraft Earth, and Minecraft Dungeons. Scott, Maslow, and Marielle will be competing against our team Mojang. Who do you think will win? Uh, us. For sure. Obviously. We'll see. I'm a little biased, so maybe Mojang? <laughs> I know that one of the games has been making the co-hosts a bit nervous. I think that's your game, Marielle. Yeah, that would be me. I'm guilty. But they shouldn't be too scared. There may be some crazy things coming along their way, but they should be fine. Yikes. Scott, you have some special guests in your segment. Um, yes. Um, my show is called Mind Games. Get up. <laughs> and I've invited my good friends Strawberry17 and HBOM94, and they'll compete against Shelby and Marielle in a word game. That sounds awesome. And one of our games has been a pretty big secret, but maybe you could tell us something about it, Masuo, please? Well, it will be in Japanese. That is a first. We've never had an all Japanese uh, game. Anything but, else? But I can give you one hint. Buzz. Ooh, it sounds like it's going to be amazing. <laughs> Okay, you all have to go get ready and we will see you very soon. Thank you, co-hosts. Minecraft is the game that keeps on giving with updates. Here's a look back at what's been added over the past 10 years. Thanks for coming from across the country. 
to celebrate Minecraft with us. Hola, hola, y sean todos bienvenidos. Welcome, everybody. Let's go ahead and have some fun. We're going to be starting with our first game of the day, which we like to call Digging for Diamonds. And here are our contestants, Shelby. Hello. Scott. Hello. And Masu. Hi. Now, let me go ahead and explain what our contestants are going to have to do. The aim of the game is to collect as many diamonds as they can from each of the blocks that are going to be in front of them. Now, each block has multiple diamonds inside, but I also added a couple of surprises in there for them. Now, they can be good or they can be bad, but that's for them to find out. Now, as you can see, the blocks are also divided into three different Minecraft biomes. We're going to assign one biome to each person and to decide who gets which, but also to be fair, they're going to choose from one of these. So, are you ready? Yes. To yep. pick your biome. All right. Okay. Good luck. Ooh. Okay. okay. Like it? Yeah. Yes. Got a good selection. All right. We'll head on over to your stations. Yeah. All right. Oh. We have Shelby coming up first with a plain biome. How are you feeling? Uh, a little nervous. I'm getting the feeling these aren't very plain. Yeah, th that's what I was going to say. Just because it sounds easy because of the plain biome, it doesn't mean that it's going to be easy. So, yeah, keep that in mind, but you're going to be fantastic. You're going to do great. Thank you. Now, you're going to have 15 seconds per block mm -hmm. to get as many diamonds as you can using one hand only. Make sure they land inside of this, because if they don't land, they're not going to count. Got it. Need them to count, all right? Okay, let's go ahead and review your first block. You ready? I'm ready. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I know. I feel great now. <laughs> All right, your 15 seconds begin now. Go, 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 go. All right, oh, what do you feel? What do you no. feel? <laughs> oh, I know. There you go. So wonderful. That's one, I think. Is that honey? There's a lot of chunks. A lot of chunks, yeah. That's two. <laughs> Thanks for this, by the way. Oh. And that one was time. in. Moving on to the second one. No time to clean. I'm just so sorry. <laughs> Let's go ahead and reveal your second one. Okay, I'm not scared anymore. <laughs> your time begins now. Dive right into it. Just oh. dive right in. Oh, I don't like what that. Is it? 
It's what sticking to the honey. It's very uh, oh stringy. You found George. I think oh, that's, George. Yeah, that's George. We don't name these. Yeah, that there's we squash the them. And Mary. Oh. Okay, they don't want to let go. Oh. All right, Ooh. you're doing fantastic. You got five so far? Oh, That's time. I'll Ooh, let those guys stay in there. Sticky situation. All right, your last block, your last chance. You last ready? Last one. Let's go ahead and reveal what's inside. And your time begins now. Go, 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 go. Oh. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's your birthday today, right? Happy birthday. Oh, there's some, some cake. I knew chocolate was your favorite when Who I asked baked around. This? I did. It smells lovely. George helped me, so. George? Yeah. Please tell me there's no more Georges in here. I mean, maybe he left a couple of his friends inside. <gasps> and that's time. You did fantastic. <sighs> thank you so much, Joey. Oh, thank fantastic. you. All right, we're going to head on over to the snowy tundra with my friend Scott. How are you doing? I was feeling quite chill, but yeah. I don't know anymore. <laughs> yeah, well, don't worry. We got some cool surprises in okay. store for you. <laughs> right All right. There. Well, you know the drill. 15 Ooh. seconds per block, one hand only. Make sure that all the diamonds land in here. Okay. You ready? As I'm going to be. <laughs> okay, I'm going to take that as a yes. So we're going to go ahead and re reveal your first block. You ready? Okay. Ooh. <laughs> Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I don't. Ready? That's what I'm gonna be. 15 right. seconds. Now, go, 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 go. Oh, Jesus. Ooh, it's a bit chilly in here, isn't it? <laughs> I can't feel my hands. A bit chilly. Come on, Scott. Come on, Scott. I don't know what's a diamond in most of ice. You come, come on, you have to at least get one. I'm not going. Come on, Scott. <laughs> I'll count it. I'll, we'll count it. We'll count it. That was a close. That was a close second. I can't feel my hand. Well, maybe you'll have better luck with the next one. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and reveal your second block. Oh, yeah, I know. 15 seconds. Dive right in. You only got one diamond. Oh, no. Uh, why is everything so cold? I mean, it is the snowy tundra. You knew what you were diving into. I'm not looking at it. I'm not looking at it. I'm okay, not yeah, just, just dive into it. You're doing great. I think that's three. See, that's everybody's enough. looking for you. Come on. Oh, that's time. Last chance. Last chance. You're not doing so great, Scott. I can't feel my arms, so I'm well, doing as best as I can. This one should be a lot easier, okay? Okay. Promise. Let's go ahead and reveal what's inside. <laughs> They don't think it's easier. <laughs> it is, I promise. You're, you're fine, you're fine. Okay. All right, 15 seconds. Go, 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 go. <laughs> See? It's so much easier. Is it? Look, it's just so snowy. I can't nice. feel anything. <laughs> just in time for the holidays, Scott. Oh. oh, that's time. You look fantastic. I <laughs> <laughs> like a chicken. <laughs> All right, we're going to move on over to the swamps with our final contestant. Masu, how uh, are you? Uh, I'm scared. You're scared? Yeah, but I'm excited. Just, yeah. I can just say, I can do it. Yes, you yeah, can. That's I can do the attitude. Yeah. That is the attitude. All right, you know the drill. 15 seconds, one, each block, one hand only. Make sure the diamonds land inside. All right? Okay. All right. Okay, here we go. Let's go ahead and reveal your first block. Whoa, what's in the box? And go right in. Whoa! What do you want to go there? What? what? You got one what already. It? You're doing this fantastic. But, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, wait, wait. wait. I, I got it. I got, got it. it. Oh, my and God. One more. One more. Where, where? I got it. You're doing fantastic. Oh, yeah. Time. Okay, we got, we're going to move on. We're going to move on. You're doing fantastic. Second block. Yeah. What? Go, 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 go. go. go, go, go. Oh, what, is, what is it? What do you mean? Cold, cold. Very what? cold. Oh, yeah. chocolate. That oh. looks like chocolate. or smells good. Oh. What? Where? I gotta find it. What? I gotta find it. Oh. oh, you're doing so good. Yes. You're doing so good. Oh, oh, my gosh. gosh. All right, okay. Yes. You're doing fantastic. Last block. Thank you. You need yeah. to seal it, all right? Yeah. Ready? We're gonna go ahead and reveal. Yeah. What? What's in the box? And your time begins now. Go, go, no. go, go, go. Oh! Come on, This one doesn't count, Masu. Oh! Count. Whoa, 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 whoa. Nope. Doesn't count. All right, come on. Go, 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 go. I got you got this. Whoa. Oh, and that's time. In 
Thank you. Thank you. They're fantastic. Thank you very much. Follow me. Come right over here. Let's all come together. Yeah, make sure you grab your yes, towel. Okay. You're going to need that. Okay. <laughs> you can keep it. You yeah, you can keep it. it. You're yep. going to need it. All right, well, look, let's all come together. I just have to say I'm very proud of you. You, all, you were all super brave just diving into the blogs without knowing what was inside. So I'm, I just want to say that I'm really proud of you. And uh, we're going to go ahead and tally your points to see who the winner is. Us. But who do you think is going to win? Me. 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 Really, you're all just going to vote for yourselves instead of voting for the other person, really? Yeah. All right, well, I guess that's what's happening. But we have a winner, and I'm happy to announce that. Masuo is here. Yeah! participating, this has been Digging for Diamonds. Actors of the world, I'm Vu Bui, your vote correspondent. During today's show, all of you will vote on which Minecraft biome is updated first with some great new features. Last year, the mighty Taiga biome won your vote over the savanna and the desert in a landslide victory, which was surprising since landslides themselves aren't very common in the Taiga biome. I suppose people just couldn't, get, couldn't resist the sweet, sweet allure of those berries. This year, we have a whole new set of biomes for you to choose from. There are over 70 different biomes in Minecraft, so even choosing which ones you can choose from was a major task for the team. But they persevered and brought three delightful choices. As usual, Tiny Agnes and Tiny Jens will take you through each of your options. And to, into, and to introduce them, we have Tiny Vu. Take it away, little guy. Thanks, Giant Vu. Wait, wait, I'm not a giant. I'm just average size? You're quite tiny. Technically, I'm just a bunch of pixels, so I'm scalable to any size. But I suppose it's all just perspective. Anyway, on to the biomes. First up, we have the Badlands. Whoa, that tumbleweed almost hit me. Well, they don't call it the Badlands because of their good manners. Ooh, this new cactus is fancy. Ouch! What's that spooky vulture doing? Vultures are drawn to loot left behind by unlucky explorers. Not the loot! Is that a, a boat? Yes, this boat has a chest built in for all the cool things you find at sea. And look, it's our new friend, the frog. Ew! Actually, we're not that close. Here's a mangrove, a tree that thrives in the swamp. We should get out of here. That frog is looking at me funny. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, mountains, snow. Watch your step. The snow is snowier than before. A goat. He reminds me of you a little bit. Mountains are getting an upgrade. Jagged cliffs, snow-capped peaks, dramatic views. The goat is getting away! Let's go! Wow, all three biomes are amazing, but you have to choose, and whichever you do will go into the game. Back to you, Giant Vu. Seriously, I am not a giant. I just seem giant to you, just like you seem tiny to me. Although, who's to say who's giant and who's tiny? Maybe we're both just infinitely scalable. Anyway, last year, before the show started, I was sure I knew which biome would win, but I was wrong. This year, I have no idea. They're all just so great. So here's how to vote. First, make sure you have registered for a Twitter account and log on to Twitter. Later in the show, you'll need to go to the Minecraft Twitter account. When we post the voting poll, just click on the biome you want to win. There will be two rounds of voting, but don't worry, I'll let you know when each one begins. For now, let the debate begin between you and your friends and your family and your...
pets, so you can decide which is your favorite biome to be updated first with some fantastic new features. And now, let's head over to hear about scripting in Minecraft from Jason and Quinn. Welcome, Jason and Quinn. The two of you are going to tell us about our amazing new creator tools. So what do each of you do on the Minecraft team? Yeah, thanks, Lydia. Uh, so I run the Minecraft Marketplace Partner Program. Awesome. And Jason, what about you? I am a developer on the Bedrock Platform team. Awesome. Before we get into scripting, Quinn, what is Marketplace? Can you give us a refresher? Yeah, totally. So the Marketplace is a great place where you can go and buy free, or buy, and there's also free content too. Um, skins, textures, worlds, mashups, all made by some of our amazing community creators across all of our Bedrock platforms. That's awesome. And today you're going to tell us about scripting. So Jason, what is scripting for everyone in the audience? Yeah, so scripting is a way for creators to, be, to add things to the game that the developers of the game didn't actually plan for. Um, so we do a lot of cool things in add-ons where people are able to take behaviors from the vanilla game and mix them up in different ways and get cool things. But with scripting, they can do lots of stuff that you'd never see in the vanilla game. That's amazing. And I heard you were quite inspired by NetEase, which is our partner in China, because they were doing some work on scripting. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, so they had started doing some scripting several years ago, um, and they've got some stuff kind of in, and we're like, we have to have that. Um, so we started hooking up. We've, we've done some different tech directions, but it, it was definitely inspired by them. That's awesome. So you have some things to show us with editor tools first. So let's take a look at some of the new editor tools you've yeah. added. So this first one, this is called the editor stick. Um, and what this allows you to do is it basically allows you to take any block and change any of its parameters. So you can go to the wool here and uh, change it from being yellow to blue. Um, and you can really change any of the different items. So here we can look at the, the wood, where you can change it from oak to birch. Um, and it's a great way to, instead of having to replace that block, you can actually just go and change the parameters to be what you want it to be. So it saves a bunch of time. Another really big time saver here is you can go in and change the uh, crops to be fully grown. I'm, yeah, that, <laughs> you just stole them. <laughs> just stole <our> beats. <laughs> well, someone was very happy with, happy yeah, with that editor yeah. tool. <laughs> Maybe in the future we should get rid of the mobs before we yeah. set up the world. <laughs> so why is that important for creators to be able to move that process along faster? Yeah, well, the, the great thing is sometimes you need to be able to, like, not just have to replace the block. Like, you have to take the thing out and put a new one in. Sometimes you're like, oh, I actually wanted this to be a different color, or I wanted this sign to be shifted a different yeah. way. It allows you to really quickly make those kind of small tweak modifications for like a polish pass on the map. It's awesome, and give you a chance to try some different colors or different yeah. ways to see how it looks. But you also have some things that speed up the process significantly, yeah. which we can look at. Yeah, so definitely in a lot of builds that creators make, they, they don't want to just do a single block by block change. Um, and they want to do some much, much quicker stuff. Let's look at some videos. quicker changes. Yeah. yeah, so here there's a the TNT wand where you can actually go and quickly remove large chunks of the world around you. you just kind of go through and, and make big holes. Uh, and it's a, it's a great way to kind of rough out an area and, and get it close to what you want and then you can kind of come in and, and fine tune it. And here's one that basically makes like a big hallway. <laughs> so imagine how long that would take destroying block by block. Um, and when you have these worlds that sometimes they're like a kilometer by kilometer or, or much bigger, like this can be a huge time saver for them. And sometimes if you don't want to go build a house block by block, mm -hmm. you can actually go and make a TNT that does it for you. <laughs> <laughs> And here, this one's great too because it's Minecraft. Like this is a way to go and build your house in a very Minecrafty way. Instead of just replacing a thing where you place a block down and it automatically builds a house, it's a TNT block that explodes and makes it yeah. there for you. I really like this homey feel of this yeah, cabin. Yeah, that's a nice, great cabin. It's way nicer uh, than what I can build. And, yeah, me too. It allows you, if you're scripting, then suddenly you could use those houses and put them everywhere for a yeah. build. Quite like. Significantly, yeah, you can, you can yes. make a whole town pop up just by placing a bunch of TNT and lightening it with the redstone or something. It's yeah. a really fun way. Those to do editor it. tools are awesome. Yeah. And you also have some tools that are helping with gameplay experiences. Yeah, this is where I get most excited about the, the possibilities of scripting. Um, not just being able to make editor tools or things that make building faster, but being able to make things that are 
change the entire gameplay of, of Minecraft, and not just relying on the vanilla behaviors, but being able to make your own unique behaviors and gameplay mechanics. So this next clip will show a really, really cool way to take on that. Yeah, so we just, uh, so the creator here, he went and made his very quick rope bridge. So he made this cool, he made an item and you can actually just go through and just aim to another point and it'll just build a bridge for you automatically using the slabs from your inventory. Now, Endermen have always been able to teleport, but it's a very sort of random teleport. And this was an ability um, they went and made where you could actually aim at a point in the world and it'll actually cast you to that point and, and project you there. So it's a, kind of a superhero feel map. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't just give you the ability to teleport, but also gives you this kind of like magic missile kind of like mind blast that you can do to take out all those pesky skeletons that are yeah. shooting at you. And uh, there's just, it adds this, this way that you can change the entire way that you can explore the world. So you can build a city and try and go save all the denizens of this city. Um, and there's another feature of this one too, where there's this big shield that you can put, put up that blocks all the different arrows. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. So there's the so there's a shield that kind of protects you for, what, 30 seconds or something? 30 seconds, yeah. So creators can use this to create all new and interesting game experiences for players. Yeah. The, the possibilities are really endless. And you have one other cool thing to show us with scripting. What is that, Jason? Yeah, so we've been working on... We've, Minecraft has had the ability to change skins for a long time. You can change the texture on your model. And as we we're... We'd kind of working on that. We were data driving a lot of parts of the game so creators could change things. And we made it so that creators could change more than just the texture of the player models. We wanted them to be able to change the actual 3D models, change the animations, add special effects to them, et cetera, et cetera, uh, and stuff like that. So we have a video to kind of show off some of the, the stuff I personally built in, in this case. Um, so I've been kind of, I'm, I'm a big fan of penguins. I think peng penguins are one of the coolest animals. He's That's been wanting I, to add these to Minecraft <laughs> forever, by the way. Not so, yet. So I quickly knocked out a penguin. Um, they're not coming to Minecraft. Um, but, um, but I knocked this out, and you can see he's got kind of custom animations. His arms kind of flap out, and he's, he, he moves very different than Steve. And then I replaced the sprint animation with an, a fun little belly slide. And this was actually kind of a happy accident I wasn't actually planning for, but the sprint particles are kicking up, and it actually it kind of helps sell the slide animation. So it's, it's always fun when those happen as a developer. So what kind of game are you hoping creators make with the data-driven player change? Yeah, so while I was working on this, I kind of had this vision of, like, I just I want someone to go make a Velociraptor where it goes around and eats something. It could be other players, it could be animals or something. And it, it, it's, it's something so, so please, community, build me a Velociraptor game. Velociraptor. I, I don't have the art skills to make the Velociraptor. Your penguin was pretty cute, though. Yeah, it was okay. Quinn, any games you would like to request? I just think, like, Velociraptor is cool, but I think a racing game where you could actually transform the player into a sweet car and have them be able to customize it and then have a bunch of animations of it like drifting around corners and stuff like that, I think that'd be super cool. And the cars are penguins. And the cars are all penguins. <laughs> or velociraptors, I guess. Why not both? Penguins riding velociraptors. So how can people, <laughs> how can people experiment with scripting? So it's actually available right now. So you can go download the Bedrock Edition and start messing around with scripting. There's a bunch of tutorials on the wiki and across the web that you can basically look at and try and mess around with it yourself. That is amazing. Thank you so much, Quinn and Jason. Yeah. Speaking of cool tech, as some of you might have heard, we have an exciting update coming to Minecraft on Windows 10, ray tracing. As part of our partnership with NVIDIA, ray tracing will be coming soon and available for Minecraft, 10 on, for Minecraft on Windows 10 for DirectX capable GPUs. There's a lot to say there. Let's check it out. everyone. It's now time for what is going to be the most intellectual game of Minecon 2019. Ooh. Let's get excited for Mind Games. <laughs> now let's welcome our two teams and see if they have what it takes. 
Hello, Team Zombie. Hello. Hi. On Team Zombie, we have Shelby and Marielle. How are you feeling? Confident. Good. Yeah. Confident? Mm -hmm. Good. Like the confidence. On Team 2, we have Team Skeleton. And we that also is go by Team Winner. Team Winner? Oh. Yeah. Hey, wait a minute. We have Megan and Liam. <laughs> now, let me explain how the game works. Our teams will take it in turns to pick a category from the wall over there. Each category has seven words or phrases. One of you must describe the word while the other must get it. Guess it. And obviously, you can't use the word itself. You will have 45 seconds to guess as many of the words as you can. Does everyone understand? Uh, no? Well, too bad. Oh. Let's begin. Okay. Okay. Round one. Team one, what category would you like? Uh, let's do O oh, Behave. O oh, Behave. That's right. bound to be a good category. <laughs> so we'll get 45 seconds on the clock. On your marks, get set, go. Um, it's this really cute animal that collects honey. Bee, yes. Correct. Um, they collect this. The, those animals collect that and they oh, turn Oh, honey? It, yes, that Correct. One. Um, they go and stay in these Hive. places, yes. Correct. Um, they pick up the pollen fl from? Flowers? Yes. Perfect. Um, they, I just said this word. They, it, it, pollen? It, yeah. Correct. Perfect. And they can hurt you with? Stinger? Yes. Correct. Um, they have these to fly. Wings? Yes. Yes, very well all done. All? Yes. Very well done. Team Zombie starting off strong, all seven. How does that make you feel? Very good. Yep. Feel good? Pretty starting good, off strong. pretty good. So, good. Team Skeleton, you've seen how they're done. How do you feel? I mean, they don't really sound like zombies. They're, they should be like, oh, oh. Oh, they should have to yeah. full character act? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So which category are you wanting? How do you feel about Sweet Pandemonium? I like that one. Sweet okay, we're doing that. Sweet Pandemonium, okay. So we'll get 45 seconds on the clock, and if you're ready, go. Uh, black and white, animals. Panda. Yes. Correct. Uh, you eat this. Uh, uh, bamboo? Milk. Uh, uh, milk? Cow? Shelby. Red cake? Shelby put her, yes, yes, cake. Correct. Uh, pandas eat this. A uh, bamboo. Yes. Correct. Uh, uh, they do this. Not a cold, but they, not cough. Hot? Oh, sneeze. Yes, Correct. perfect. Uh, rare panda. A uh, red panda. No. What? Uh, other color, other color. A uh, yellow, black, Like a white, tree, a tree. Tree, green panda? Yellow, <laughs> gold panda? What? Bark, bark. Bark, brown panda? Yes. Right. Uh, after five. Uh, nighttime? <laughs> Evening? <laughs> number, number, after five. Six. Yes. Right. <laughs> Pandas have a lot of these. They're, they're, they're categorized. Uh, uh, they're and uh, <laughs> the last uh. word was personalities. I wouldn't have got that one. Green panda. No, I don't know. You said rare. I'm thinking of toys. <laughs> <laughs> you did very, very well, though. You're not too far behind Team Zombie. Thanks. So, Team Zombie, you're one point ahead. Do you think you can keep your lead? I hope so. Okay, so what is going to be your second category? Can we do not on poor poise? Not on poor poise. Okay. <laughs> so, we will get 45 seconds on the clock, and we will begin now. Okay. Friendly sea creatures. Fish? Uh, Squid? No. The other ones that like jump up. Dolphins. Yes. Correct. Um, these, if you kill them, they drop, uh, die. They're also squid? Yes. Perfect. Um, they have a green shell. Turtle. Yes. Sea turtle. Correct. Um, this is a fancy fish that we like to eat. It's pink. Salmon. Yes. Correct. Um, this one blows up. Puffer fish. Yes. Yep. Um, you break these and you can eat them. They're green. They're Kelp? Blue. Yes. Yep. Um, this is a phrase of the animal that's in the water. The animal, oh, I can't the water. I said water. And that is the final category, so you have Aww. Vito the full seven points. I'm so that's okay. You've done very, very well, though. It's a tricky one. It was a yep. harder one with a phrase. So, Team Skelton, we messed up. Ah. Mm. That's <laughs> our chance. chance. Thank goodness. Mm. <laughs> this is your chance. You can play for even. Now, are you ready? Yes. Just even. Okay. okay. What category are you wanting? How about meow? Uh, How about meow? Yeah. Very good one. Good. So, <laughs> we'll get the final 45 seconds on the clock. All right. We will begin now. Uh, they live a in... A cat. Uh, uh, villagers live in... Uh, homes? A house? Yes. A village? What's it called? Yes. Correct. Uh, animals in the water. Uh, fish. Perfect. Correct. Uh, pandas are in this. Cocoa uh, beans. For, uh, Biome. Forest? No, jungle. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, being Walking, quiet, uh, kind sneaking. of perfect. Yes. 
Uh, cats are this before they have a home. Uh, stray? Correct. Yes. Uh, kind of cat. Very popular cat. Uh, tabby? Perfect. Yep. Uh, animal that goes meow. Cat? Kin? Episod no, no, perfect. Uh, opposite of in. Cat out? Cat in? Cat, yep. Uh, cat outside? Cat uh, out? Sure. Yes. Oh, so no. I haven't even scene. heard this phrase. What is Cat it? out of the bag. Oh, okay, that sounds better now that you said it. It's a very loud. well known scene. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> and we are done. Honestly, I haven't enjoyed myself this much in ages, but there can only be one team crowned the winners. If you'd like to come forward. Okay. Time for the physical challenge. The physical challenge? Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> okay. And the winners are Team One! <laughs> It was a valiant effort. Thank you both for taking part. You both did amazingly. And you've been watching Mind Games. <laughs> 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 Breaking news! An update has swept the realm, changing villager life forever! But one villager refuses to embrace our new way of life. Here's villager number nine with more info. Thank you, villager number five! Fellow citizen, why don't you want the update? Loves you. Loves you. But I do want the update! Wow. Are you against the update? Have you even tried the update? But I am getting the update! What about the new feature? Do you think you're better than us? What? I, I didn't say any of that. We thought you might say that. So we made this video for you. What? Welcome to the most villager-friendly update ever. There's campfires, berry bushes, panda. There's taiga villages, desert villages, panda. Tundra villages, savanna villages. Uh, fox. Villagers all over the realm are loving life. Thanks to the update, I got a job as an armorer. Look at all this stuff. The update gave me a whole bunch of new trade. And look, we have levels now. Bet, find a bet. Gotta find a bet. Ah. Yes, we all have new jobs now. I'm a farmer. Hey, get off my crop. Shoo, get away. Oh, nitwits. Any bad thing. No, 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 no! The update is the greatest thing to happen to villager kind. Look, see how much better your life could be. Get the village and pillage update today. Uh, the village and what? Doesn't it look great? Uh, did you change your mind? So, will you be updating now? Uh, well, there you have it. Another citizen satisfied with the update. Thank you, villager number nine. The village and pillage update is out now. Have you updated yet? Yes. No, not you. Them. Da 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 First up, we have the Badlands, lands which some have even gone so far as to call bad. If you vote for this biome, you're voting for tumbling tumbleweeds, funky... Hello? Oh, Tiny Yens, hi. Yeah, but, no, no, I'm telling them right now. No, okay, yeah, I, w I will get to the vultures, yeah, totally. Okay, okay, bye. This just in. The vultures do not, as has been widely but wrongly reported on the internet, steal your loot. They're just attracted to loot and will circle around the area. You heard it here first, folks, so it is the truth. Next up, we have the swamp. Vote for this biome to be updated if you like things to be a bit more swampy. Mangrove trees, hopping frogs, and cool boats with chests in them. And finally, we have the mountains. Vote for this biome if you prefer some high altitude exploration. Snow-capped peaks, epic mountainy views, and the snowiest snow since snow. What's your favorite? Which do you want to see updated first? What will you choose? To vote, you need to log into your Twitter account, go to the Minecraft account, and see the poll that's just gone live. 
click on your choice to register your vote. Sometimes life requires thinking outside the blocks. No pets allowed in the house? Fill the backyard with muddy pigs. Host the perfect pixel party. And craft some compact cuteness. Or build something a bit more heavy metal. Minecraft Earth is at your fingertips. And above your head. And right behind you. Just watch out for surprise chicken showers. Sometimes things don't quite go as planned. Luckily, Minecraft Earth lets you tell your own stories. You can even upscale an epic fish fail. So grab your friends and explore an unbelievable world. Our own. Discover new dimensions to your creativity with Minecraft Earth. I'm back and I'm with my friends Torfi and Jessica and we're here to show you Minecraft Earth. Hey, I'm Torfi and I'm the Minecraft Earth game director. And I'm Jessica, and I'm the lead producer on Minecraft Earth. So Minecraft Earth is a brand new augmented reality game. That means that Minecraft is all around you in real life. You play it on your phone, and it uses the phone camera to place your Minecraft builds and adventures right in front of you. Adventures are life-size pieces of Minecraft that you find in the real world. We have one right here to share with you. This is amazing, we're right inside Minecraft. I know, look at these cute mobs, they're so adorable life-sized. Oh wow, and now, they're food. No! Let's dig down and see what we find. Okay. Oh, I think I see something under here. Oh. Hmm. Is this some kind of puzzle? This is so cool. What do you think we should do? Maybe we should try putting a flower in the flower pot. All righty, I will put the orange tulip in this flower pot. Oh, something's happening. Hmm. Okay, I'll take this white flower, mm -hmm. oop, or place a torch. Don't shoot it. I'll take the lily of the valley and I'll put it right there in the white flower pot. Mm. Ooh. I'm awesome. going to take one of these blue flowers. Oh, it went in my backpack. I'm going to go and get it. Oh, I think I grabbed that. Oh, there you well, go. Adventures can be puzzles, they can be combat, they could be mining, and so much more. Oh, wait, wait, oh, wait, wait, wait. Happening. something is happening. Skeletons! Ah. Oh. Uh, uh, shoot them. Got them. I'm still getting shot at. Okay. Oh, that's good. We get okay, them all? Great, right. great. Oh, no, oh, no, 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 no. coming. Watch out, watch out. Oh, no! Life-size zombies. Where did they come from? Okay. Uh, I hope there are no more mobs. Okay. Oh, I see gold. Oh, awesome. Oh, that, we yeah. should get it. Well, actually, in an adventure, everyone in the adventure shares in what you take out. Oh. Really? It's like some sort of utopian resource sharing system. Does that even work? In Minecraft Earth, it does. Hmm. <laughs> all righty. Oh, we got right. it all. Okay. What else is down there? Oh, something's happening. Wait, a door is opening. This flower adventure has only led to bad things. Look. <gasps> Skele More skeletons! Get out your bows! Get them, get them. Uh, Jessica, you have oh. someone on you? Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh. Okay. Oh, good. Okay. Oh! That's a cool looking chest. Yeah, let's break it open. All right, let me get my ax. What came out of it? I don't know. It fell on the floor. I'm gonna get it. What is it? Aha! What? It's oh. a blue bloom! Oh, it's so cute! I want one! Oh! 
the moo bloom usually plants flowers when it walks on dirt and grass, but this one is going over there. Bye, moo bloom. bloom. This is amazing. How do I get this game? Well, Minecraft Earth is uh, coming out in October. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> you can go to minecraft.net slash earth to join us. Goodbye, Mo Bloom. <laughs> Please welcome Alina and Frederick, who are here to announce something awesome. So what did you two do on the Minecraft team? Hi, I'm Alina. I'm the business manager for Realms on the Marketplace team. I'm Frederick, and I'm the program manager for Realms. So you're going to announce something cool, but first... Tell us about what Realms is. So Realms is a really good way to play with your friends. Um, when you subscribe, you get a personal server right in the cloud. So it's always online and always accessible. And um, your friends will play for free with you. So you're the only one who has to subscribe. And how many people can play on a server? So we have two tiers. So you can either go for the two-play tier or the template tier. Awesome. And what are you going to tell us about today? Realms Plus. It's Ooh. our new subscription that combines Realms with Marketplace content. That is awesome. So what does that mean? Realms, which you just told us about, plus Marketplace content. So with Realms Plus, just like before, you will have access to your Realm, 10-player Realm, and all the cool features that come with it. But in addition, you will have the entire catalog um, of Marketplace content. Skins, worlds, mashups, resource packs. That is awesome. Frederick, how many pieces of content will be coming to the first version of Realms Plus? We will be launching with over 50 pieces of content. Uh, and then they'll be changing each month? Yeah, every month we will get new content on there. Yeah. So that it's going to be really good. Amazing. Yeah. And Alina, your son has a realm. I think we have a photo of it. Of course. <laughs> so, what has he built here with his friends? Yes, this is his realm where he plays with his uh, neighborhood and school friends. And it's really fun. Um, and adults join too, their parents. Uh, it's a cool place to hang out. And we really like to see you know, what kids do and how they show off their secret knowledge of Minecraft with all the strategies and, and uh, tricks that they get from YouTube videos and reading the Minecraft books. Do I spy a very adorable Microsoft building in there? Yes, some people just like to go to work. <laughs> I guess he does. I think we definitely have to say hi to your son then. So hello to Andrew. Hi, hi Andrew. Andrew. Thanks for letting us show off your realm. <laughs> we know he's watching at home, so thank you. So this sounds amazing. How do people start using it? How do they get Realms Plus? So when we launch Realms Plus, and we will be launching soon, we will have a free trial for new players. So you get 30 days for free. If you're already a subscriber for the 10-player Realm on Bedrock, we will upgrade you automatically for free. And the price won't change. It's going to stay $7.99. So how did you decide on that? Because that's really cool. You're adding all of this stuff to Absolutely. It. That was very important to us. We just wanted to give our players more options, more fun things to play with, and keep the price the same. It's very simple. One subscription, $7.99 with ROMs and content. And we will be adding more things every single month so that um, there will be something for everyone. That is amazing. Thank you, Alina and Frederick. Thank you. Let's look at a preview of some of the awesome content coming to Realms Plus. joined by Sarah and Jared from the Character Creator team. Thanks for having us here. <laughs> Thank you for having us. What do each of you do on the Character Creator team? Uh, I'm an art lead on the Character Creator team. And I'm a game designer on it. 
That is awesome. So today we're going to take a look at Character Creator, and we're just going to get right into it so you can tell us about it. Sounds good. Yeah, absolutely. So the Character Creator is fun because there's all sorts of different aspects of your character that you can change. Like you can change your skin tone and texture, your eyes, your mouth, your hair, and change the color of all of those different pieces, and then layer clothes on top of it. Yeah, it's something we came up with for Minecraft Earth, because just as we're putting Minecraft into the real world, we wanted a new way to let you put yourself into the game and really represent you. And so the, the, adding a bunch of more flexibility for you to build a character piece by piece. Uh, we're really inspired by skins. This kind of builds off the like, history of players like building their own skins, but kind of letting you do that inside the game out of all these different parts. Um, and one of the cool things here you can see is doing like limb replacements or all sorts of different stuff that lets you represent whatever you look like in real life if that's what you want to do in the game. That's awesome. And all of those players get automatically. Yeah, yeah. yeah all that stuff comes for everybody to start building their character automatically. That is really cool. And why was it... it <laughs> yeah. Why was it important to you? You added things like prosthetics and all different skin tones and different body shapes. Why is that important to you? Uh, well, because you know, Minecraft players are from all walks of life, right? Anybody. And it's always fun just to see a part of yourself in the game. So we wanted to make sure to like, try and include as many people as possible. Mm -hmm. That is awesome. And how many char characters can you have? You can make up to five different characters, and you can save those in either game. They'll sync back and forth between Minecraft Earth and Minecraft. And we just wanted you to have that flexibility to build. Maybe like one kind of look is what you use when you're farming, and you're playing that role with your friends. Or maybe when you're playing something competitive, PvP, you might want to be a little more intimidating and try and like do something that really encompasses that. So there's all sorts of different clothing options to build off of that, and really trying to put some of the, the coolest ideas our art team has come up with are like in there to show off like what's possible with this. Mm -hmm. it is, it's good to note, though, it is just uh, kind of cosmetic, self-expression stuff. It doesn't actually change the way you play. Everything is just how you look. That's awesome. Yeah. And you said that this is inspired by Minecraft Earth. How does it fit into Minecraft Earth with a mob of me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, there's this, this cool little thing that when you're, when you're in Minecraft Earth, there's a mode called build mode, which lets you put a build plate here, like in this case down on my desk, and then I can put a little representation of myself into the, the world I'm creating. Because maybe it's like, it's, it just makes the world more alive. It's not just a static structure, but if I put a character in there, and then I can uh, watch him w wander around, and it's super delightful for me, especially when he wanders off the build plate and takes a look at like my coffee mug or something sitting right next to it. So it's a tiny version of yeah. Jared, like yep. tiny Agnes and Jens. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone can have their own now. <laughs> So you're going to show us a few things that no one has seen, which one is achievements mm -hmm. and how you get special things for achievements in the game. Yeah, this is something that'll come uh, slightly after the launch of Character Creator, but we really want to let players show off what they've accomplished in Minecraft through what they wear. So like in this case, you can earn a lumberjack shirt when you chop down a tree for the first time, or when you craft your first hoe, we'll give you a little a toothpick wheat thing there. And then if you play the game a really long time, we'll give you a really long hair and beard. Uh, that you can equip to your character to show that off. And then this is probably my favorite item that we're adding, is this like fish globe that covers your head that you get if you build a conduit in survival mode. So all these things, we'll have stuff in Minecraft Earth and M Minecraft that you can earn through challenges and achievements. Awesome. <laughs> And the next thing we'll jump right into, because I know people will be very excited to hear about it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So the sort of two things that are upcoming are capes are coming to the character creator. Um, <laughs> 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 very excited about that. Um, and emotes. <laughs> so you'll be able to like dance and wave and have a cape in uh, the character creator and also in it, if you have any custom skins or skins that you've loved for a really long time and are very attached to, it will all work with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and how will people get these awesome capes? <laughs> Uh, they can grab them right now in the, in the marketplace for free. Uh, there's one available for everybody if you want to go get it. Right now, it just attaches to the skins that come with the pack that you get. But when Character Creator launches, you'll be able to attach it to any one of the skins you've used in the past or, uh, or a new character you build with Character Creator. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sarah and Jared. Character Creator looks amazing. Yeah, Thank thanks you. Thanks for having <laughs> us. <laughs> 
Last year, we premiered our Meet a Minecrafter series running on our YouTube channel. Each month, we feature a different Minecrafter and how they're uniquely using the game. Today, you'll meet a Minecrafter named James Delaney. My name is James Delaney, and I'm managing director of a company called Blockworks. I started playing Minecraft when I was about 11 or 12 years old, um, just a year after the game came out. Uh, a friend actually showed it to me, and at first I thought it was a kind of stupid, stupid thing. But after a few hours, I really got into the creative mode of Minecraft. I started playing online uh, on multiplayer servers uh, with other people who really enjoyed the building aspects of the game. And then in 2012, uh, I founded Blockworks, a team of people, with me and three, three other friends that I'd met online. So at Blockworks, we work on two main areas, the Minecraft marketplace, as well as engagement and educational projects. Those projects, we build worlds for schools, museums, galleries, but also a lot of work with nonprofits, um, charities, uh, and educational institutions. So we have about 30 members who all work from home, from about 20 different countries, but we all connect to the same Minecraft server. So we're all working in this, uh, this virtual office together in the same digital space. So someone builds something in one area of the world and the other people are watching that and then react and respond to that in, in what they build. For my final year thesis at university, I looked at democracy and uh, video games specifically with a big chapter on Minecraft and urban design and how Minecraft could help cities and help communities take part in the planning process, which led me to join the board of Block by Block in 2019. Part of the reason Block by Block uses Minecraft is because it's a very democratic tool. And rather than an architect or a city official telling people what a design can be, anyone can use Minecraft to explain and visualize their own ideas in a fully democratic environment. So buildings like this cathedral here in Siena didn't have just one architect and one person with an idea but were built by a group of master craftsmen, each uh, improvising the design as they were building it. And Minecraft is in some ways similar because you don't have uh, one plan that everyone follows, but you have multiple people, multiple crafters building in the same world, using their experience and responding to each other at the same time. And maybe this is something that uh, architecture and design today can learn from Minecraft. ここからは私、マスオが考えたゲームをみんなでやっていきたいと思います。皆さん、マインクラフトに蜂が追加されるのはご存知ですよね。今回はその蜂にちなんだゲームをやっていきたいと思います。その名も蜂八弁弁。では
すぎるんでもう少し難しいバージョンでやっていただきましょうか。Are you ready? Yep. Yep. <笑> Are you ready? Yes. Go! まあ今ねこうやってねたくさん集めてもらったんですけど<笑>マインクラフトってみんなで協力してやるゲームじゃないですかだからもう勝者とかどうでもいいやということでマイコンライブはね,ですねまだまだ続きますのでぜひ皆さん最後までご視聴くださいということで以上マスオの88ブンブンでしたわお。The good news is all of you Badlands supporters now get to pick again from the two that are left. So, what will it be? Time to vote again, and now you're voting between the mountains and the swamp. In the first round, the mountains have the majority of the votes, just by a bit, but will it still hold its lead and become the next biome to be updated in Minecraft? You get to decide, so make sure to go to Twitter, make sure you're logged in, and click on that new poll that was just posted to the Minecraft account. This is exciting, folks. Make your mark on the future of Minecraft. So, while you're figuring out your final choice for this year's Biome Vote, let's talk about your favorite game that you haven't even played yet Minecraft Dungeons. Joining me is David Nisagen, the executive producer of Minecraft Dungeons. Hi, David. Hello, Boo. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Why don't you tell our community all about this new game? So, I will. Minecraft Dungeons is a brand new game developed by a dedicated team of about 20 people in Mojang in Stockholm. It's a passion project. It's an action adventure game inspired by classic dungeon crawlers. It focuses on combat and adventure. So, Minecraft Dungeons has a very different gameplay than the Minecraft we all know and love. The players they're on a mission to defeat the evil Arch Illager. They will explore the game world and search for treasure, fight familiar and brand new mobs, and collect cool loot to help them on their adventures. And since every adventure has a beginning, we'd like to show you, for the first time, the opening cinematic for Minecraft Dungeons. It was a time of great adventure and danger. Shunned by his kin, an illager wanders the land, seeking a new home. But all he found was hatred. Driven by rage against those who wronged him, he wandered blind to whatever end. Until at long last, the illager found something. That would change him forever. The Orb of Dominance. Corrupted by evil, driven by vengeance, the Arch Illager made all bow before him. And if they did not bow, They would fall. The illagers raided the land. Who 
would have the valor, the purity of heart, to stand against the arch villager's reign of terror. Well, not that one. But maybe... amazing yeah it's pretty cool right so now we know why the players are on their adventures now the game is designed to be fun to play together with your friends and we'd like to show you just that you all know Masuo and we also have the game director from Minecraft Dungeons Mons Ulsson here on the couch and they will show you how to play Minecraft Dungeons in couch co-op so what are we seeing here Yes, so this is actually the first time we show this. This is a brand new level. It's called Creeper Woods, obviously a forest area. I haven't, yeah. I haven't even seen any creepers yet. No, they're further down the line, right? So you see some other uh, mobs here that you should recognize from your Minecraft. You have zombies, you have skeletons, you have all sorts of interesting things. I like that it's just like Minecraft, but different. The gameplay is different, but everything looks familiar. All the behaviors of the mobs are like you would expect them to. There shouldn't be any strange surprises. We should know and understand how things work. But visually, it's quite surprising. There's all these things going on. Yeah, you see those lightning bolts that come from there? That's actually one of the players that have an enchanted sword that does a thundering enchantment. Sometimes you get that lightning strike. What's that llama with the arrow in its head? Oh, that's a nice TNT explosion. <laughs> yeah, the llama that's there, that can be summoned by one of the artifacts in the game. You see in the lower right and the lower left, there's like this little hot bar. And to the right, you see a yellow symbol. There. That's the wonderful wheat. Using that summons the llama, and the llama helps you in battle. It spits at enemies. There's even some larger mobs here. Oh yes, some of the mobs, to give you, to give you a bit more of a challenge, they have more armor and a bit more extra weapons. This is great. <laughs> yeah. So, as you see, they are, they are exploring. Oh, that, that they used another one of these artifacts. It's called the Windhorn, and it pushes mobs away. You can pick up all these sort of cool things, uh, on these levels and equip them as you see fit. And also, I'd like to mention that all of these levels are randomly generated, so you can explore them uh, every time you play through the same one. It'll look and feel quite a bit different. So it'll be surprising each time you play. That is correct. So now I think we're approaching, oh, spiders, oh, lots of them. Spiders. Oh, that was a fireworks arrow. Wait, there's a pig with a chest on it. Of course. So we call that the piggy bank. Now, this game genre is all about loot. So if you manage to find one of those and get some help from it. Oh, wow. Yeah, it drops lots of cool loot. And that you can equip just as you see fit. Now, Mons and Masuo are actually coming up to a rather difficult part. So let's get them some expert help. So let's welcome Marielle. Yeah. Yeah. So you can hot join this game at any time and you can play up to four players together. The game scales its difficulty depending on how many players you have. So let's see how they do. Yeah, so when you join immediately, difficulty scales up. Yeah. What if you leave? It scales down. Okay. So, so if you need to go there. head off to the bathroom, yeah, you can do that. So up to the upper right corner, you see the objective, what the players are supposed to do. Now they are supposed to free the villagers. They just save one. one out of five, and so there's four more to discover and save. And as you see, there are more mobs now. Oh, that's gonna be a tricky TNT. Oh, someone was knocked down. I love the huge effects of some of these things. Oh, what is that? Oh, that's a healing totem. Anything that's inside that the rooms gets extra health. And I saw one of them just revive the other. Yep. That's also, the game is really designed to be fun to play together. So if someone is knocked down, other people can help each other out and revive them, bring them back into battle. So it really makes sense to work together and not just go for your own goals. Mm -hmm. And also, if you look closely at the characters, the player characters, <laughs> there's so much stuff going on. <laughs> but if you, if you look below the player characters, you have this little square. That means that those who have that square, they have boosted extra damage 
This is particularly from the guy in the wolf armor to, to, the, to the right. So when they're closer, they actually help each other more. Mm -hmm. And that what does the wolf armor do? It actually boosts damage for everybody who's nearby. And there are many different armors that does different things. Oh, just one more villager yeah. to save. I wonder where, they, where it is. They'll find it. Oh. Well, it's nice that they've cleared the mobs out of this section. Mm -hmm. Oh, there you see. You have a little guidance to tell you where it is. Oh, okay. Cool. Well done. <laughs> Mons, Masu, and Mariel now save these villagers from the evil arch illager, but there are many more adventures to be had in Minecraft Dungeons. The game is coming to PC, PlayStation 4, Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, and Xbox Game Pass. And if you want to know more, remember to sign up at minecraft.net slash dungeons. Well, that's all the time we have with David for now. Don't forget to go and register your biome vote on Twitter. This is your last chance to help choose what biome will be updated next in Minecraft. But let's change subjects really quickly. One of the things that makes us the most proud to work on Minecraft is how the game is inspiring and helping to build a better world. In 2012, we started a partnership with UN Habitat called Block by Block. Minecraft is challenging the status quo around the world with this incredible initiative. When people are passionate about things, they find a way to use it to make a difference around them. Minecraft introduces people to potential they didn't know they had. We decided and we made a change. Block by Block is a joint program between Mojang and UN Habitat that uses Minecraft the video game to empower people who don't typically have a voice in the conversations about their community to help shape the city around them. In many parts of the world, youth make up a really significant part of the population. And if we're not finding ways to speak to them using a language that they can understand, their voices are completely left out of the conversation about how urban areas should be improved. Most of the youngsters here in Kenya, they don't have the place to expose what they are thinking. The people who know the best what a certain part of the city needs are the ones who actually live there. Projects can range from anything from a park that's used by all ages, day and night, to a route that school children use to walk to and from school every day. We build the physical area itself within Minecraft, and participants are able to go into the game and use the normal game controls to redesign the area one block at a time. Anyone can be urban planner and architect while working in this block-by-block -block workshop. It was very fun because you felt like to be able to help the city while just playing. I came up with a skate park idea and some trees surrounding the park. After the designs are completed, the participants themselves present them to all the local stakeholders in the community, and elements from each design can be chosen to complete the final model. After having worked on this project for a number of years now, I think it's amazing that a video game like Minecraft can be used not only as a game, but actually as a way to build public spaces, better cities, and more equal societies. Some girls also even talk with me that, okay, now they find out that even they can start thinking about choosing some of the future job, reaching to the computer, but also thinking to help them to find their own potential. After the final model is completed, it's sent to architects who draw up the final architectural plans, and then we fund the construction of the site. To me, it's so exciting that in this program, you're able to see how Minecraft can tangibly make a difference in the world, that the people in the workshops are able to give their input and literally change the neighborhoods that they live in. Something that I worked on is being made in real life. Hey, friends, I, I made this. As I always say, you change Dandora, you change Nairobi, you change Kenya, you change Africa, you change the entire world. It all starts here. With Block by Block, we're using the creative building game Minecraft to empower people to create their world around them. It's time for another Minecraft first, the Triathlon Relay. 
The co-hosts will be going up against Team Mojang in a game of skill, knowledge, and endurance. You're going to be running, which is why I'm not playing. <laughs> we'll be featuring three different versions of Minecraft, starting with Minecraft Earth, moving to Minecraft Dungeons, and finishing with good old Minecraft. Huge thanks to Everbloom, who created the race map that we'll be playing today. Our teams will take it in turns to see who can be the quickest over all three, and there may be a few surprises along the way. Let's meet our teams. Here we have team co-host. Yeah. Hello. Hi. Hello. And team Mojang. So let's talk about your challenges. Minecraft Earth will be a build battle. Minecraft Dungeons will be a mini level run. And Minecraft will be a race challenge. The aim of each game should be obvious, but I'll be here to help you out if you get stuck. Are you ready, co-hosts? Yes. yes. Please line up. All right. For the build battle, you'll be building a creeper head. Are you ready? Yeah. Go. <laughs> We've got the blocks for her ready in her inventory with various greens, black. I appreciate that. Oh, of course. It makes it a lot easier for me. <laughs> oh, we're not going to make it that easy. Oh, really? No, you're being timed. Oh, OK. Um, <laughs> oh, and I, I think I see a few chickens flying Why are in. Are chickens here? Mm -hmm. I did not send out for chickens. No, we didn't ask for chickens, chickens but we've got them. Be here, please. You're doing great. I see the creeper mouth already forming. Yeah, There's the eyes. Here, that's the that eye. looks <laughs> amazing. And do you notice that I'm actually using multiple colors? You I'm are. I see that. Varying greens, if different you wanna, textures. Like, give me extra points for that. Mm. I love that. I don't think I'm allowed to do that. It's really, really just time. But you got to go as fast as you can. Fine. Okay. I guess I'm not using that. Oh, that chicken's in the way. Yeah, the chicken's like not being very helpful. That's all right. Oh, you're almost oh, done. Oh no. Oh no. Uh -oh. That does not go in the eye. That's all right. I'm That's looking good. No. Okay, I'll okay. fix it. I'll, I can fix it. I can, I can also fix or, that. Mm, yeah. <laughs> we have a lot of fixes, but it looks good. Okay. We've got a creeper head. That looks great. Creeper head! You're done! Yeah, we're good. Go tag the player! <laughs> We've got Maso playing on our Dungeons level run. All you have to do is find two levers. Two, two livers. Just two. Where are the livers? Uh, we won't make it that easy, though. There's a good few monsters in here. Hey, okay, don't just attack me. <laughs> oh, they're definitely going to attack you. But there's one. You've got one. Yes, 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 now you yes. just need one more. One more, one more. Try and get there without dying. No, 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 don't attack me. There's a lot of monsters there to block you. You just got to duck and roll yeah. through them. Ooh, there's a skeleton no, no, there to no, stop no, you. No, no. Oh, there it is. I found it. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, you just no, got to no, click no, it. No, oh, you're stuck. No, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's all right. I think you better go tag your next player. You were right there at the lever. Moving to this temple. That's all right. That's go tag right. Scott. Let's get into the race. Yes. All right, Scott. Let's see if you can make up some time in this race. We'll just start the countdown for you. Three, two, one. There you go. We just got to run through the. Uh oh. Oh, those creepers are in the way. They don't look happy. Oh, oh. But now you just got to do some parkour to get across. You know how awful I am at parkour. Are you awful? That was great. We'll have a little party really quick. That's fine. Okay. Oh, God. Oh, God. Okay. Sensitivity's a little Ravager high. Run. All right. The Ravagers are a little quick, but we've got you on a pretty good horse. Yeah. Yeah. We're just going to go on a nice stroll. Uh, I, we didn't name him. Feel free to give him one. Gerald. Gerald. All right. He's doing a great job. Villagers are cheering you on. All right. The audience at home are. And the audience at home, I'm sure they're cheering you on. <laughs> there they are. There we go. Great job. <laughs> There you go. We just got to get you slipping around through the ice. But don't slip too much. All right. Okay. We're doing good. Now we've got a little game to play too. Okay. The skeletons aren't going to get in your way. Okay. <laughs> All right. Here we're going to just play a quick game of whack a fox. Okay. No foxes were harmed in the making of this game. You just got to give them a pat on the head. I think you just need a couple more and we'll send you on through the next room. Oh, Ooh, they're fun. quick though. There you go. We're gonna go for some mining now. Normally you wouldn't dig down, but you're, you'll be fine, I think. Okay, we're fine. Okay. Oh, you're fine. Oh, oh there's so the Enderman. Oh. Yeah, they're just building a quick portal for you. Okay, I'm good. Let them do their jobs. You just gotta go right on through. Okay. And you did it. Yes. Yeah. Woo. Great job, but I can't tell you how well you did just yet. Now it's Team Mojang's turn. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Again, you'll be building a creeper head for the build battle. Ready? Go. 
We've got the same inventory, same setup. Just gotta build it as quick as you can. Because this is all about time. Two, three, four, five. Oh, I see some chickens coming in. Oh. Hopefully they don't get in the way. Four, five, six, seven. Oh, we're counting. Eight. Oh, yeah. I know this is gonna be paper. accurate. These are the experts, after all. Right. You make the frame first. Mm hmm. Very good tech now. Uh oh. Uh oh. Zombies. Zombies aren't supposed to be there. Yeah. Don't get in my way, man. Uh, I got oh, a job just, to do. They're bumping into each other. They're fine. Great. Okay. As long as. All I right. We see the mouth. Stay that off my mouth. Great. Oh, there's a mistake. We'll That's all fix right. that. Okay. Now we're going to get some eyes. Okay. Uh, we're filling in the face, and all you got to do is fill in the rest with green. That's right. You're yeah. Smart. I went for a single color as a simple uh, creeper. That's smart, because we're all about time right now. This exactly. Is race. All right, so we're just filling, we're just filling in, in gaps. right between. Oh, the oh no! no! What did you do? Oh, no. That we weren't supposed so to be real mean. creepers in this segment. That was so mean, Torve. All right, let's see if we can right. recover a little I, bit. I will rebuild. We will rebuild. Thank you. <laughs> It'll happen. That's fine. Well, maybe. The chickens aren't going to help it much, are they? The chickens, no, the chickens aren't helping the creepers, zombies, but you're doing great. You are almost right. there. Thank you, audience. There you go. One more. You're done. done. All right. We've got the same level run for you. You just have to find two levers. Uh, easy. And try not to die. Yeah. Preferably. Yeah, that'll be fine. It'll be fine. Yeah. Let's see how you handle all these mobs. Ooh, TNT. Oh, no. We don't like TNT here. That was great. All right, there's your first lever. Now you just gotta find the last one. Yeah, it should be easy. It should there's be easy. There's not that many monsters. Here somewhere, I'm sure. Somewhere around the corner. Ooh, these are cool powers. Yes, come on. There it is, yeah. you just gotta get through. Oh, you got it! <laughs> Woo! Yeah! All right, now we just have the race left. We're gonna start your countdown. Three, two, one. And now you just gotta beat Creeper Scott's time. Chasm. This shouldn't be too bad. Uh -oh. We've had some bad experiences with Creeper so far. Oh, oh great job! We just do a little party really quick and we move on. Ravager <laughs> Now, if only we gave you a Ravager, right? Yeah, I'll win. But they're just a little bit too fast. Okay, right. we're just gonna go on a nice breeze, nice walk, bounce you around just a little bit. There we go. We got the Creepers cheering, the audience is cheering. Woo! Now we're gonna just a quick trip through the nether. I don't think there's any guests in here. All right. And now we're just gonna cool you off real quick in here. But the ice is just a little bit slippery. So let's see how quick you can slip right through this section. There you go. Don't get too dizzy in here. All right. Skeletons taken care of. Now we're gonna play Whack a Fox. Let's see if you fox. can get five foxes as quick as you can. Not and not the chickens. We don't want to punch the chickens. Oh, oh they're quick. Oh, where are they? You got to be faster oh, than a fox. Oh, they're popping in and out really oh. fast. Can't find the There's one. There you go. Another one. All right, I think just, there you go. Now we're going to go mining. It's safe enough to dig down in this. Woo. Now we're just going to have the portal built really quick. Friendly Enderman taking care of it. Now you just gotta get through. Oh. You did it! <laughs> you guys did great. Why don't you gather around? We're gonna see who won the first ever Minecraft Relay. All right, you guys all did great, but our winner today is Team Co-Hosts. Thank you guys so much. Since 2011, MineCon has been the time of year that we come together to celebrate the past, present, and perhaps most excitingly, the future of Minecraft. Our event has evolved over the years to what you're experiencing right now, and next year, we're evolving it even further. Joining our live broadcast in 2020 will be an all-new, in-person event called Minecraft Festival. Minecraft Festival will take place from September 25th to September 27th in Orlando, Florida. I'm pretty excited as a Floridian. 
You can expect interactive exhibits, inclusive gameplay, competitive tournaments, live entertainment, creator and community panels, and more. To sign up for more information, please head to our website. Very exciting. And now, please welcome to the stage, Agnes and Jens. Welcome. How has the show been for the two of you? You were buzzing around. <laughs> yes, no, it's been super fun. Yeah, really amazing. And yeah, it's been fantastic. <laughs> Great show. It was very cool to see the Dungeons premiere. Yeah, absolutely. It's so fun. Uh, and I, l I love the opening cinematic. It's so cool. It's beautiful. So Jens, how does it feel when we have two new games coming out? Oh, it's of course great, like we have Minecraft Dungeons and Minecraft Earth, but we actually have a third Minecraft game coming out. It's a board game called Minecraft B B Builders and Biomes. <laughs> Builders and Biomes, yes. what? Very exciting. Yeah, there might be a hint at Builders and Biomes somewhere for people yeah. to see. So you're going to tell us about an update, the next um, big update, but before that, I want to know how you got into gaming. Agnes? Oh, yeah, so I have played games and loved games as long as I can remember. And I used to draw games before I could program. I actually learned programming much later, so I used to draw my own games. Um, yeah, and then one day I thankfully made it into gaming and work on games, and it's so fun. We have a photo of the original Tiny Agnes <laughs> here. <laughs> I love... <laughs> I love that you're playing on a computer, you also have a baby bottle. So those, <laughs> you have really been playing since you were very small. Yes, I mean, I think I should be old enough to drink from something else there though, but I, I probably was quite stubborn. I'm like, I want my bottle. Were you coding at this point or was that, you said much later? <laughs> yeah, no, no coding yet, only playing. Mm. And Jens, how was game development? How did you get your start? Yeah, it's a very similar story. Like, I loved games, and I made levels on, on paper and added enemies. And uh, when, I, when a friend showed me a shoot -em up construction kit on the, on the C64, then, then when, that's when I realized, oh, you can make games. And I've been doing that since then, more or less. And of course, we have a photo of adorable tiny Jens there on the left playing a Game & Watch. Yes. <laughs> you, you look the same. <laughs> Without the beard. More beardy. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to tell us about the next update. Yes, uh, but first. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but first. A, a part of the next update, we want to show you a, a block that is not completely related to the theme of the update, but still, it's really cool. So here is the target block. Target block. that. I also like your little chicken advisor there, uh, <laughs> hanging out during the whole process. Tell us about the target block. Yes, yeah, so you can shoot arrows at a target block, and it will emit a redstone signal. And the closer the arrow hits the bullseye, the bigger the signal will be. How do you see players using this? Uh, well, make mini games and various contraptions, of course, and, and maybe also create new hidden entrances to their bases. That would be cool. Yes. That would be amazing. So you said this is part of the next update, which yes. is? Yeah, we're super excited to finally have a nether update. Ooh, the nether update. So the nether hasn't been a place that's very livable, and that is all about to change. So how is that changing? 
I mean, well, it will still not be easy to live there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but you can. So we want players to be able to have a base there. So, for example, you can set your spawn in Nether, you can find food in Nether, but it's still a really dangerous place. Food in the Nether? So that means there's something... Well, it's a new mob, and we will talk more about it later. Yeah. Okay. So first... We Okay. Yeah, of course. We also wanted to make sure that there's more things to explore and, uh, and yeah, more things to find and more things to do. So we, we wanted to introduce uh, biomes uh, to the nether. Yes. Uh, so we will actually show some of them today. And the first one is the Soul Sand Valley. Soul Sand Valley. Right, not sure I would want to live there. <laughs> <laughs> well, depends on what you prefer. <laughs> so what's happening in Soul Sand Valley? It looks incredible. Yeah, so I would say this is a scary biome. It's quite barren and it has this blue fog and a blue fire, which is a new block. Or actually, if you place fire on a soul sand, it will now turn blue. And it's also like the stalactites and visible fossils. And you'll be able to take the soul sand block and that will work in any of the Yeah, dimensions. absolutely, absolutely. That yes. is very cool. I bet people will do really amazing things with blue flames. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you did say biomes, so we have another biome to look at. What biome is that? It's the Nedward Forest. There's a lot in the nether wart forest, so what's happening in there? <laughs> Lots of things. So yeah, as you can see, it's two variants of it. So the red one has quite a like, very live atmosphere in its own very weird and nethery way. So it's like swirling particles and a lot of vegetation. It's very dense, so like the players should get lost in there. And then we have the blue one, which, ha which has a very like a unique atmosphere. It's like even more weird, if possible. <laughs> and it has just the particles of it falling and then lots of new blocks, like lots of new vegetation. How did you decide on the colors? Because it's so different than the look of the nether when you add these biomes. Yeah, when we wanted to make sure that when you explore, you get a more variation since, and more, more than just red and yellow. And we were thinking about how the overworld is much green, blue, and gray, and the, then this black, purple, and yellow. So we were thinking, how can we add more color depth to, to the nether that, that kind of creates a good feeling for the, for the nether still? Um, it's really beautiful. But you said it's going to be just as hard. So even though this looks quite you know, like an oasis, it's not going to be? Well, we still call the Netherboard Forest the Nether Oasis, but that doesn't mean it will be like easy being there. So there will be, for example, a new hostile mob, and I think we could show it now, and we temporarily call it the Pigling Beast. Pigling Beast. So you said we're temporarily calling it the Piglin Beast. What does that mean for everyone? 
So we would actually love to get suggestions from the community on a better name. So please, if you have any suggestions, send them, and then we can pick the name later. And what happens with this new to-be-named Piglin Beast? So the to-be-named Piglin Beast is really aggressive, so it's quite scary, but it's also the food source in Nether, actually. And so we really want the, the experience to be very unique in Nether. It shouldn't feel like another overworld. So when you get your food, you can't just have like a pretty little farm. Instead, you need to find this scary, <laughs> aggressive Piglin Beast and get the food from there. And this is the first time you have a food source in the Nether? Yes. Which is really awesome. So that does make it livable-ish. <laughs> livable-ish. <laughs> Scary. <laughs> livable and where does piglins come from? So piglin is actually what we call the pigmen now. And we are introducing piglin mob as well. Um, we can take a look at the video, I believe. Let's see them. Piglin. They look mean, but they also have the floppy ears. <laughs> the floppy ears. <laughs> they're, they're kind of cute, too. <clears throat> yes. Sorry, but yeah, there's a lot of going on in, in this video. But uh, at the core, the, the pigling is almost like a new civilization you know, that we add to the nether. And they, will, they are actually hostile towards the player. Uh, they also don't like wither skeletons. And they hunt the pigling beast for food as well. Wow. Um, but uh, they do uh, collect gold, and if you, as in this picture, wear uh, gold armor, they will kind of, like, they will ignore you. They won't like you, but they will ignore you, uh, unless you open chests or start poking in their stuff. Yes, I really like this mechanic, actually. So, if you open a chest close to a piglin and they see you, they will get really upset. Yes. Oh. But there's actually a good reason why the player wants to uh, approach uh, the piglins, because uh, we will introduce a new kind of trading with them that we uh, call bartering. Mm. Uh, but it's a little bit different to villager trading. It's <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, because villager trading, you know, the villagers are like, huh, huh, very friendly. The piglins do it in their own way. So it's like you can throw some gold at them, and they will just like, throw an, an item somewhere, and then you can go pick it up. So it's more piglin-style trading. That's amazing. So will there be new things that they're going to barter with you? It will, but we will not tell what you can barter yet. Okay. So new things coming to the nether. That is a Sweet. lot of nether things coming. Yes. Any particular favorites in this update for either of you? Uh, or you love them all too much? Uh, yes. <laughs> but I, I, for me, it, it, it is the piglins, because we, we, have, we have so many ideas. For, for Ooh, yeah. so many Sorry. ideas for them. Yeah. Agnes? I think for me, it's the biomes, because, well, it will be so inter interesting to explore, but of course, biomes also add so many new resources, and so many new atmospheres. So yeah, I'm very excited for the biomes. Amazing. Speaking of biomes, we have a vote going on that we now have a winner for. Prediction. That's exciting. Predictions on the winner. It's either swamp or mountains. Which do you think will take it? Hmm. Well, I will guess swamp. Okay, yeah. Jens? Well, snow is snowier. <laughs> <laughs> so you're guessing mountains? Mountains, yeah. <laughs> hmm. Maybe we should find out. Is our correspondent somewhere close? Yeah, okay, there you are. Hello!
I have the vote right here. They have tallied it. They have double checked it. Who is going to do the honors? I think it's Jan's sister. <laughs> you are quick to. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, all right. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. And the winner is Mountains. Mountains! That is amazing. How does it feel with the mountains? It's great, absolutely. Yeah. It's it is also a your prediction. <laughs> prediction, yes. <laughs> you remind us what we'll be getting in the mountains. Um, you will get goats and uh, you will get a kind of a new kind of snow. Yes. Yes. And we'll also look into like the, the generation of the mountains to, to give them a more majestic feel. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Jens and Agnes, you have given us a ton to look forward to. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> it's been a show packed full of announcements. And to answer some of the questions that have been coming in live during the show, stay tuned for a developer panel that begins right after this. But first, let's take a quick look at what's happened over the course of this show with so many updates. what it is today without all of you. On behalf of our entire team, thank you so much. Plenty more to talk about. Let's kick off our post-show wrap-up with our developers panel. Thank you, everybody, for joining me here backstage. Excellent job on the show. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. 
As uh, also joining us in a little bit, you know her as one of the hosts of the show and Mojang's chief brand officer, Lydia Winters. But let's jump into the panel first. So, Corey, you work on the vanilla gameplay team. What are your plans for the Illusioner mob? Oh, the Illusioner. Mm -hmm. All right. So the Illusioner has been in the game for quite a while, but it hasn't actually, in, at least in Java Edition, but it hasn't actually been part of the, the core game. It's just been there kind of hiding. Uh, so I really want to add the Illusioner to the game. We've been wanting to add it for a while, but we didn't have the technical capabilities originally. So we've been working on building up those capabilities so that we can add it in. And I really, really want to see them into raids. I think they would be perfect for raids. I think they would be a great addition to those and uh, planning that soon, hopefully. Awesome. All right, so next up is Jason. Jason, you're on the platform team for Bedrock. When will complete parity happen? So we, for every update, we want to actually have each update come out at the same time for both versions for all the updates moving forward. There's obviously a back catalog of parity differences, and we are working through those as quick as possible. But realistically, we'll probably never have full parity because there are different technical, they're just a different technical platform that each one is on, and there's different design considerations as well. So like on Bedrock, we have to make sure that touch and controller work really well, mm -hmm. and sometimes we have to tweak gameplay as a result of that to get everything to feel as good as it possibly can. But we want to make sure at least spiritually the games, both, like both platforms feel like the same game. Mm -hmm. And when, if ever, will we be seeing penguins? Because I saw your, that, that was super cute. Hopefully soon, but uh, <laughs> we have to convince some people. All right, well, if you need any help, I don't know, maybe I can blow up Twitter or something. We did get the brown mushroom in last year. <laughs> yes, we did. All right, well, our next question is about the character creator, and we have Sarah here. Uh, Sarah, will there be additional free options in character creator in the future besides what's in the beta right now? Yeah, absolutely. So kind of as what Jared had spoken to earlier, um, there's stuff you can get through achievements, but then an additional like to that, there's going to be more free stuff that people will be able to get over time. Nice. All right. So now let's go to a question about Minecraft Earth. And we have the game director, Torfi, here to answer. Torfi, is there a limit to the number of people who can participate in an adventure? Yeah, there's a limit. It's kind of like the limit with elevators. It's like how many people you can physically squeeze <laughs> together. Because you actually have to be there in the same place. Yeah. You can't like play an adventure together like from, from different houses or different cities. You have to actually be in that park at that time. Uh, the cat actually is 40. It's just a number we typed in. Like We were <laughs> testing it, and, uh, and you know it, it could go higher and higher and higher. We were just afraid what would happen if more than 40 people would pile up on, on each other on like a three meter by three meter square. So 40 was the safe spot. I mean, yeah. 40 is still a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kind of a luxury problem to have. Yeah, have totally. You usually don't hear about it working out that way. No. <laughs> How does the uh, game determine who's playing with you? Well, that's actually quite simple. Mm -hmm. The game determines who is in the adventure simply by who's there. So if, if I'm in that park at that time, now remember the, or not remember, I haven't told anyone, but <laughs> Now you can remember, after I tell you now, that uh, <laughs> the game spawns the adventure, let's say, in, in, your, in your park, and, uh, and, it's, and it's only there for like 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. so, so you get in, and, and it lives there for 10 minutes, and you play the adventure, but then, then you know, some, by virtue of some sort of magic, it starts unspawning. <laughs> so uh, the, the, the people who are there, even if they don't know each other, if it's just the same people, they're part of the same adventure, and they share the same prizes. But w when it collapses, in a, uh, like these spawns, they're out. So, Got it. Yeah. Okay, interesting. All right, so we also have the game director for Minecraft Dungeons here, Mons. Uh, Mons, do you have a favorite ability in Minecraft Dungeons that we should look forward to? Sure. So the way uh, abilities work in Minecraft Dungeons is that they're kind of separated between artifacts that you have in your hotbar, they have a cooldown, mm -hmm. and then there's the enchantments uh, where you invest points that you get as you level up into gear. Mm -hmm. um, so I think combining those... Um, gives some really interesting gameplay. Um, so I'm a t the type of person who likes to play an archer character, take out enemies from a distance. Mm -hmm. So combining the multi-shot enchantment for bows, which lets you, lets you kill a bunch of mobs at once, um, and then using the fireworks arrow to sort of get fireworks all over the screen, um, I think that's really fun. That's super cool. All right, so um, let's now get into some vanilla gameplay questions, this time for Agnes from the vanilla gameplay team. Agnes, why are there no female villagers? Okay, yeah, so the reason is that we actually don't have any genders at all in Minecraft. I mean, I am aware of that the existing villagers do look quite much like men, but they are not actually. I 
it's more for historical reasons that mm-hmm. look like men. Uh, and we also, when we made all the new villager skins for the village and pillar chapter, we really thought a lot about making sure they were neutral. To, mm-hmm. to show that we don't have any any genders. Very nice. All right, so we have a question for Frederick from the Realms team. Frederick, will we be able to use the content that we get from Realms Plus in places other than our realm? Yes. Like the, nice. the content that is included in Realms Plus is uh, you. It's available just as any other marketplace content. If there's a skin, you can equip it and you can play on it on the realm, but you can also play it on a on, on locally or with your friends if you have a server and. and if you have content already on your realm and you want to try out some other piece of content that's mm-hmm. uh, included, you can just download it and play it locally and offline. So, that's great. Yeah. So once you've got it, you can utilize yeah, it pretty it, much it, wherever. All the 50 pieces of content that is included, mm-hmm. you, you can use it wherever you want. Awesome. All right, so some general questions. So whoever wants to dive into these, that's totally fine. First up is, which feature was the most fun for you to add into Minecraft? You. <laughs> <laughs> I would say, I mean, there are so many features that I worked on in Village and Pillage. A lot of them were really fun, Mm -hmm. but I think the overall most fun was the simplest one, which was brown mushrooms, because uh, at the last Minecon developer panel, somebody asked why we didn't have brown mushrooms, and I just kind of went out and said I would add them. Uh, And now you you were forced to. Yeah, I mean, I didn't really talk to the team about it, you know, I just kind of went ahead and said that, and then... It was okay. We ended up adding it. So I'm going to go ahead and say that the Illusioner will be this year's uh, brown mushroom. Very Ooh. cool. Ooh, very cool. Sorry, guys. Okay. Anybody else has a yeah. particular favorite that they want to talk about? The, uh, I loved working on the entire Update Aquatic, but mm-hmm. especially on Update Aquatic, the uh, tropical fish. So it was kind of funny because initially we were like, we're just going to put a clownfish in there. And it was working in the coral. And I'm like, corals have way more color variations and this and stuff like that. And I was like, hey, what if we made like... 16 colors of fish. And then I'm like, well, what if we had like two shapes? What if we had 16 colors of stripes? What if we had this? And then we had like 3,500 different <laughs> patterns of fish or something. So it kind of grew up, but it was so much fun to do that. And I love seeing that, like how it turned out in the reefs as a result. Personal question off the top of my head, just because I'm curious about this, but there's so many options in order to build things and be creative in Minecraft. Do you ever find yourself having to pull back? And then if so, how do you make those decisions? Yeah, so just the easy one off the top of my head, y'all. That's how I good guess. I am. <laughs> Anybody want to go for that, or did I scare, scare you all? <laughs> I mean, when you're working on, I mean, I work on vanilla Minecraft. Mm-hmm. Uh, so when you're thinking of features for vanilla Minecraft, you could go as, you, you kind of think big, and then you shrink it down to what will actually fit in vanilla. Because you could go super crazy and think about the craziest, funnest thing possible. Yeah. But that might not fit in the game. It might not work for all player types, and you kind of have to shrink it down. That happens for almost every feature, actually. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so it's always a bit of a give and take. Definitely. Yeah. The, key thing is, the key thing is making sure we get all the features that do make it in to be as polished as possible. Mm-hmm. Like, we could put twice as many things in there, but they're not going to have the polish that we'd have otherwise. Yeah. So yeah. By, by keeping the updates tight, we can make everything be amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I we would also say that it's also... <laughs> Oh, no, sorry. Sorry. okay. All right. <laughs> Important that uh, that whatever you put in there doesn't have just like one function. Mm-hmm. Like you, you generally, if you add the block or you add a mob, they, they should have like multiple functions and be connected to multiple systems. Like we have this new chicken in Minecraft world called the clock room, and the clock room actually loves to hide in the darkness and lays mushrooms. And uh, it was actually a problem when we were testing it. I don't blame it. it. I, put, yeah. I, put it I put a bunch of them on a build plate, and I was like, turned back, and I looked back, and they were all gone. We thought it was a bug, and we started debugging it. But we realized later they had found a small crack uh-huh. in, the, in the ground, like a little tunnel into the ground, and I started digging, and they were all hiding, like in a, in a little hole. <laughs> the because they're ashamed that they're laying mushrooms. <laughs> I, I think to Toss's point as well, um, so... We, we really think about when we add these things, like, like you have with the clutch room, uh, and like when we add things to dungeons, about how it fits into Minecraft as a whole, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, we have loads and loads of ideas, obviously, and they all go into sort of a phase of, of pruning, and then we take the things that feel like they really belong in the game, and then we add those. Very cool. Agnes, did you want to finish your thought? And then the next question actually is for you, too. Okay, no, sure, but I can finish this one. No, so... Yes, related to this, we work a lot, you know, very iterative and with prototypes Mm -hmm. uh, and to make sure that it's actually fun in-game. So we make sure to, like, implement all the things very early so we can test in-game and then decide based on how it feels in-game, what should stay in the update and what should be removed. And it's also not a failure if we, for example, like, remove a prototype. That's part of the, the process to make sure that we really have 
fun things that right. we do. Anyway. All right, well, so the next question for you actually is a Twitter question, okay. and it is, will you update all three biomes eventually, but first the one that got voted or only the one that got voted? We will update all of them eventually. So, yeah, but mountains will be first. Very cool. Good, because that's the one I voted for. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> totally did. Team I was back here while you guys were on stage. I'm like, I'm going to go. go, go I, vote. Vote. <laughs> I voted for swamps. <laughs> but I really well, like you lost. <laughs> I did. Vote, I, not go. I, I like mountains. <laughs> <laughs> I can finally finish. I've been working on this, um, this uh, the Shining Hotel, that Overlook Hotel, mm -hmm. for like two years now. And now that the mountains, I'm going to wait until the mountain update comes out, and then I'm going to bust out with it. I'm oh. very excited. <laughs> All right, so moving on uh, about. Uh, less about me, more about you guys. Uh, this is um, to everybody as well. Uh, what is the funniest bug that you've ever encountered? <laughs> kind of going off of what you were saying about yeah, right. the collection rooms. There was one in the character creator for a while where like, when you loaded up the game, for whatever reason, they would blink and it would get faster and faster and faster and faster, just like <laughs> constantly blinking. It was the most like, oh my God, they're possessed now. It was frightening. That sounds amazing. Especially, you should have left that in. I know, right? It's definitely a feature, especially in like a lineup of five, like on the carousel. Yeah. It was so bizarre. That's super creepy. I love it. <laughs> Anybody else has a favorite? When we were bringing the animation system into Bedrock, um, all the pigs all of a sudden, they, they kind of rotated their whole bodies this way and their head was on the ground. It kind of looked like a pink vacuum cleaner. <laughs> and they were running around the world like that with their head scraping yeah. the ground. It was the funniest thing. I really like all this. You know, yes, when the mobs models get weird, which they kind of always get when we add a new animal to Minecraft, because it's, at least in Java, it's super tricky to add them. So yeah. it's often like the head is there and the, le <laughs> like the legs are up, up on the back and it just looks super weird and they walk around. Has there ever been a bug that you guys have run into that you liked so much that you just left? Alone? All the oh, well, yes. All the time. We have a, a thing in Dungeons where... Um, if you so the arch illager sometimes appears and disappears and it does that by kind of getting really small and then getting bigger again and so we had this bug where if you shot him while he was really really small um, the arrow would scale up with him and suddenly when he's big <laughs> again he has this giant arrow shooting out of him um, and uh, now in the game we have an enchantment called growing so if you shoot the arrow kind of gets a little bit bigger oh that's cool <laughs> oh, that's good lovely. problem solving all right, so this one is for everyone, and it also is from Twitter. What are your favorite mobs? Ooh, okay, I actually, <laughs> might be a weird answer, but I really like sheep. <laughs> that's totally lit, <laughs> that's fine, yeah. And, and I like, when I play myself, I think, well, maybe except horses, sheep as mobs I have most, like in, in my big town I'm building, and, and I'm using a lot of, you know, color their wool, so I can build funny, colorful buildings with it. Is that what attracts you to the, the sheep as the mob? Like, what is it about the sheep that you like? Well, I mean, they are cute, but yes, it's the wool and that you can color it. Mm -hmm. I really like that. Yeah. Very cool. Anybody else has a uh, There's has a one fave? that I think is amazing, which is part of, uh, part of the new mob from Minecraft Earth, and it's unannounced, so I'm not going to talk oh. about oh. it. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's the next new. poll Maybe for next stone. year, is <laughs> which cool. mob do you think was Torfi's favorite. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's a for next year. We've got it figured out. Um, all right, so here's a good one. Uh, where do you guys see Minecraft going in the next 10 years? So we want to continue update Minecraft for many years, much more than yes, 10 years. Um, so I think we will continue probably to have these major updates. Mm -hmm. uh, two updates here approximately and then just continue and then of course we need to make sure to always keep minecraft minecrafty mm -hmm. and that's something we think a lot about yeah as, as soon as we add anything or just fix a bug we, we always need to think so we don't like break the magic of yeah. Minecraft. no i think that's brilliant we were actually talking yesterday about how at this point minecraft is pretty iconic so i feel like it's you know it's here to stay and it's always going to remain relevant mm. um does anybody else have any specific things that they think are going to Minecraft in 10 well, years? I mean, you're in a unique position because you've got dungeons, and that's a whole different ball game yeah. of sorts. So from our perspective, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about uh, all the new games coming out. Uh, both Earth and Dungeons, I think, are uh, exciting, and mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to that happening. Um, but we're, I'm also looking forward to updating Dungeons over time. So mm -hmm. we'll launch it, but then we'll keep updating it uh, as we go, just like we do with regular Minecraft. Not to put you in the hot seat, but what's the pressure been like knowing that you're taking such a beloved game and kind of shifting gears with it in a different direction? Mm -hmm. 
uh, You're like, it's been the worst. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's certainly a little spooky. Uh, uh-huh. and, and it's something that we think about a lot as we make it. Uh, but we have the luxury of sitting right next to the vanilla team. So mm-hmm. if, if we need to like sync with uh, Agnes or Corey or Jens, uh, we just walk over there and do that. And yeah. that's... Uh, tremendously useful for this yeah that's we great. actually collaborate a lot uh, on the design so we mm-hmm. have yeah, i mean we sit next to each other but we also have like weekly things where we talk through all like the design questions mm-hmm. that have come up and inform each other so we're really synced which is really good there you go. just like minecraft you need to learn how to collaborate in order yeah. to build great things <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh hired me for your pr all right so <laughs> Torfi, this one's from um twitter okay. what will minecraft earth be like for those in rural areas compared to those in cities and suburbs well, that's a good question. So Minecraft Earth has you know, these features that we looked at, the adventures and the build mode, but in order to go out and find the adventures and to collect blocks, you have to like walk, basically use your feet. Uh, and, and there's a map. And uh, we used OpenStreetMap, which is like an open source database, which is a really amazing map of the entire globe. Mm-hmm. So in order to pick the places where we put the content, we didn't choose the path that other games have gone, to have players go out and promote uh, areas. Because what happens then is it's mostly like places in big cities or, or in bigger towns. But OpenStreetMap literally has a map of every small town in the world. So uh, we had a bit, of a bit of a problem. I probably shouldn't talk about it right now, but I will. I mean, feel free. That, yeah. that, <laughs> that some people, like people are playing Minecraft Earth right now in five cities, but some people found out a way how to play them somewhere else mm-hmm. and, uh, and, and and when that happened like I woke up and I opened the map and I can see like a, like a you know a heat map of the world where people are playing and it was like literally everywhere it was like small towns in Russia somewhere in Siberia <laughs> somewhere in South America in mm-hmm. Africa and in, in Asia like it was it was literally like a virus infection of the entire world <laughs> which is cool but you know shouldn't have happened <laughs> the point I'm saying is uh, uh, it should be should be everywhere that where people live. So like not in some like random hill in the middle of the Sahara, maybe mm-hmm. not, but mm-hmm. where people live and where's the map, there should be Minecraft Earth. Very cool. Totally random and maybe you did or didn't do this and I wouldn't know because I haven't played the beta yet, but are there any Easter eggs at all? Yeah, yeah, yeah? Ton, tons. tons. Yeah. Great, well, I will be outside a yeah. lot. <laughs> all right, so um, again, this one's to everyone. This one's from Twitter. Um, Actually, you know what? I'm taking that back. I want to I want to move on to a different one. Corey, what things are important to consider when brainstorming ideas to suggest to developers or make into a vanilla style mod? That's a big question. I know. <laughs> That's why I switched it up cuz the other one I think is going to be more fun. Yeah, so when when you're kind of thinking of ideas, uh, when we think of ideas, we try to think first of would this fit in with the original game? Does it add something to it? Mm-hmm. And then we think, does it work with other features that are already in the game? We really try to add things that will interact with the, the game loop and try to bring everything together. Mm-hmm. Um, so when you're thinking of features to suggest, try to think about how does this interact with features that are already in the game? How would this uh, enhance them, for instance? Like penguins would really enhance <laughs> Minecraft. <laughs> you make them chase fish. And <laughs> yeah, they'd be perfect. But that's what you got to think through, is exactly. what you're saying. Yeah. They would, inha- they would interact with fish, you know. There's uh, glaciers they, that were added. And they drop water. feathers. They'd be on glaciers. They... <laughs> I, like the, <laughs> I like the pitch that I've started. I'm, I'm, I don't think I'm allowed to go two mobs in one developer panel, so I'm going to yeah. hold off there. No worries, no worries. All right, so this is the other question that I was holding off on. This is for everybody. What are your favorite pizza toppings? <laughs> you want to just start and go around? Oh, yeah. I love pepperoni. Nice. Classic. Solid choice. I like the classics. Uh, it's like a, a tomato and cheese pizza. Nothing, yeah? nothing yeah. fancy. That's fine. It's totally fine. I think bell pepper. Actually. Bell pepper. Yeah. Okay. Nah. <laughs> this is... This is a tricky question. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> 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 Thank Thank God. Well, to be fair, like, if there's a really good cheese on it, I probably think, yeah, mo- mozzarella, which is mm-hmm. quite basic as well. Mm. But, yes, I would say so. You thought that was tricky? I thought that was a perfectly <laughs> hard answer. No, I've had to thought for a long time. I've think for a long time. <laughs> That's true. You guys have actually been on stage for, like, a good solid two hours. I'm sure you're starving. Uh, Torfi, what about you? What's your favorite pizza topping? I once topping? had a pizza in a restaurant in Eastern Iceland which was called Rudolf, and it had, it had like reindeer meat and red oh. berries. It's very sad. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. But, uh, but generally, it? just uh, pepperoni and, and pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Was it, was, I mean, emotionally sad, yes, but was it tasty? Sadly, yes. Sadly, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what about you guys? Ham, pineapple, and bacon. 
Ooh, mixing it up. <laughs> I'm with Agnes here. Like a really good mozzarella cheese. There's a one called Scamorza, which is like a smoky. Uh, Smoke? Mo- yeah. Ooh, it's so good. I need to yeah. try that. Okay, I'm really hungry now. Great. <laughs> I know, me too. I, I got the shakes. I'm like, oh, let's get some food. <laughs> All right, so last question. Um, I know we briefly touched upon it before about the biome, but let's talk about the result of the biome vote. How do you guys feel about mountains being in this year's winning biome? I mean, we know you wanted swamp. Yep. Yeah, yeah, but I'm super happy about mountains as well. I mean, we, okay. we like all of them at the so I guess we wouldn't have them in the vote. So, no, it, it will be great. And I'm excited to start prototype on it and see what will happen with them with, like, the cooler uh, mountain generation and things like that. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Everybody else? I've, yeah. been, I've yeah. been campaigning internally for goats for about a year now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm ecstatic that mountains won. Yeah. And then awesome. Team goats. I think that the one of the best things about vanilla is that we've been doing recently is taking the features that have been there for a long time and then kind of updating them. So yeah. it'd be really nice to give a fresh coat of paint to the mountains. Fantastic. You guys too, are you on board for the oh, mountains? Oh yeah, 100% all on, you know, team mountain goat. <laughs> You're like, I'm in a dungeon, I don't. Yeah, I, think, yeah. I, think it'll, I think it'll be good. I'm a little bit sad about not seeing the frog. But <laughs> yeah, the frog was it. cute. You will. All right. Right. That's a solid yes. point. The frog was super adorable. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for joining me and congrats again on such an excellent show. You did an amazing job up there and I'm looking forward to seeing the new updates. Uh, before Lydia Winters joins me backstage, let's take a quick look at some of the highlights from Minecon 2019. Hello. Hi! Craft team. Articles and growing the crop. Toby! Toby! Welcome back, everybody, and welcome, Lydia, and congrats on an excellent show. How are you feeling now that everything is wrapping up? It feels amazing and surreal, and it's like, it's hard to describe. It's something you've been working on for so long, Mm -hmm. and then the show happens so quickly, you're like oh, I need to watch it back so I can actually live it. Yeah, yeah, it's like, yeah, it's kind of like a wedding. You do all this planning and then it happens. You're like, did that just happen? Um, But you loaded us down with amazing content. I was enjoying myself the entire time. What was your favorite moment of the show? I know it's a hard, it's a a hard hard one because it's like all, you know, do you want to split them up in two? What was your favorite, um, I guess, uh, game-related announcement? Oh, I can't. Game, this is like choosing kids, I would imagine, if you have them. Like, <laughs> how, do I, how do I pick? I, I think the main thing for me was this year, the thing I loved is that we got to show so much of our, like, what's happening in the studio. So, like, mm-hmm. last year we got to kind of, we announced Dungeons, but we said very little about it, you know. And this year, to get to show gameplay of Dungeons and Earth, it just felt like, how huge is it? it mm-hmm. This was the first show where we, we felt... Like, we have to cut content. It's too much stuff, which is, like, the most luxury problem to have. Like, there's too many cool things to tell everyone. Yeah, I I actually really enjoyed the Dungeons trailer as well. I thought that was super cute. It was amazing. So that's going to actually start the game. So that is the intro sequence, and it will put you, you know, in the mindset of what's happening in the game so that you can go off and, like, Mm -hmm. start playing, which feels like that was so exciting to premiere here. I also like the mini, like, the physical mini games that you guys had on stage. That was maybe one of I was sitting here and I'm like oh man I wish I could play that right now they were (laughs) amazing and especially because they've been practicing but with nothing like actually sticky or gross in the oh so they didn't know what they were touching no so they they you know we practice with things like cups and just normal stuff so you oh you kind of dig around and I just their responses (laughs) couldn't have been better and like just seeing the scene where Scott was digging and like Maso was like was yeah I just loved it his face was like my new favorite he should host 
so much stuff. Like Everything, he's my new favorite of all time. I was just like, <laughs> oh my gosh, that guy's adorable. Um, how excited are you for the year ahead? I mean, you guys have come a long way and you've got a ton of stuff. It's really amazing. I mean, when I started at the company, someone told me like every year it gets crazier and crazier with Minecraft. Mm-hmm. And now I'm into like past my eighth year working on it. And honestly, every year gets crazier and crazier. And I don't think 2020 is going to slow down when we <laughs> launch two new games. Do you ever get three a with the board game? Do you ever get a chance to kind of when you come out with so much content to to sit back for a little bit and just kind of take a breath and assess and just enjoy what you've made? Or is I, it immediately back to the drawing board because, you know, Minecraft being what it is, you there's always the demand. I feel like this might be that only moment that I have. Like, like right sitting now, this very and like second. enjoying <laughs> it and then we'll all, you know, we'll s- We'll start talking again, like, oh, this year, next year we can do this because that worked really well. And it's just, you know, when you work on something that you love and are super excited about it, it's hard to not do it. Awesome. Um, out of the voting, was the mountain biome your personal pick or which one were you shoot, rooting for? I'm from Florida, so I was a bit biased towards the swamp. <laughs> <laughs> but at least we'll have Minecraft Festival in Florida, so you know we can have mountains in Minecraft. <laughs> so I'm glad you brought that up, because that's a perfect transition into my next question about the announcement of Minecraft Festival 2020 being super exciting. Uh, what are you most looking forward to there? I think it's always awesome when we get to spend time with the community because our players are so important to us and at the heart of everything we do. So when you get to be around people who are so excited about Minecraft, it's very, very contagious. So I think it's Mm -hmm. something that we missed getting to meet with people. And now to combine sort of the original Minecon of having an in-person thing with this amazing show and really think about how do we take everyone on a journey. So Mm -hmm. I'm really excited about it. And it's in Orlando. So again, you know, back to my Florida roots. So my mom is very happy. Oh, awesome. You're going to hang out with you, hang out with the (laughs) They'll just be happy to get to come. (laughs) That's fantastic. Well, thank you so much for joining me in the after show. To the folks at home, thank you for joining us backstage today. I've had an absolute Absolutely wonderful time bringing you a little peek of what's to come for Minecraft. It has been an excellent Minecon Live 2019, and we look forward to seeing you all next year. Have a good one, and bye! Bye! Bye. Thank you! Bye! Bye. 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 Bye.